Shabbat Shalom, Mr. I hope you can hear me. I'm on my uh, I'm on my iPad today. Um, before I get started, there's there's a couple of concepts that I that I want to let you know that you're gonna you need you need to go back and 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 really study these concepts. I'm not gonna have time to go into the concepts, but to get to the warning, I'm gonna have to touch on a few of these concepts. And, and um, one is the image and likeness. The other one is breath of life and then dress in peace. Um, if you're not familiar with those concepts, you're really going to have to go back and, and do research and study and kind of get familiar with those concepts. Image and likeness, breath of life, and dress in peace. So... This morning, I want to stay in the theme of um, mission and emotion, and specifically, uh, which one takes priority in our lives, or which one should take priority in our lives. Emotions are essential to our life. Emotions is what drive us uh in a in a particular direction in our life in some cases emotion is the mission for example um we're told to fear the most high that fear is a, is a is an emotion but it's also a mission to fear the most high and another is abhor evil. We're supposed to abhor evil. Abhorrent is, a, is an emotion. So uh, that's kind of the, the theme um, and, and where the warning is going. So let's get into a little bit of scripture and see if we can. Um, and let me just say this. this what, the warning I'm giving today is, is pretty basic, pretty black and white. Because Maury Samak and Maury uh, Dawood is pretty, they're painting a very vivid picture of this emotion versus mission um, theme. So I, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to go very basic, very black and white on, on this most emotion and mission. So if you will, let's go to Genesis, Bereshit chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 15. There she, or Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 15. And I'm going to give a little background. I know everybody knows it, but, but i got to give a little background. Now, this is, after, um, this, is, this is after the sixth day um, when the Most High commanded the earth to bring forth all land creatures. Every... every uh, animal, beast, creature that inhabits dry land, earth. And particularly the sixth day when he created man or Adam in his image and in his likeness and he breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. So up to that point, Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 is where we are. And it reads, And the Lord God took the man, Adam, and put him into the, into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. That right there is a mission. And, and I want to bring this point out. We see that the Most High commanded the earth to bring forth the creatures. The Most High commanded man to to be fruitful and multiply. The Most High commanded man to subdue um, and have dominion over all of the creation. But 15, it doesn't say that he commanded the man to dress and keep the garden. Did Adam even know that that was his mission and i'm going somewhere with that do you think adam knew that to dress and keep it was his mission 
He was commanded everything else. But the Most High said he put the man in the garden to dress and keep it. He didn't say he commanded the man after he put him in the garden or before he put him in the garden to dress and keep it. So this, was Adam supposed to, because he had that breath of life, because the Most High shaped him into his uh, image and likeness, should he have known that was one of his duties? Not necessarily commanded to do, but that's what he should or ought to do, is dress and keep that garden. Moving on. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's a command. That's definitely a commandment. There was no ambiguity whatsoever. Adam knew he was not supposed to uh, eat of that tree. And the day that he did do it would be the day that he surely died. And like Maury brought out in, in the Hebrew uh, study, especially on the Sabbath, the Most High gave uh, the Israelites a test with that manna. Hey, don't go out on the seventh day to collect manna. You collect that manna twice as much on the sixth day. And he said it was a test to see if they were going to be obedient, to see if they were going to yield to their desire to collect that food on the seventh day, or if they were going to be obedient to the Most High and stay on mission. Do not collect that food on the seventh day. The same here. The Most High used this tree that he commanded the man not to take of to see if he's going to be obedient, if he's going to stick, or if he's going to yield to his desire his emotions for that tree that's in the midst of the garden. Jumping forward. Well, we, we, we know that, that Adam and Eve, uh, they fail. They yield to their desire for that tree. So if you remember, uh, it says Kawa looked upon that tree and it was desirous to her. She, she saw that it was good. You know, and instead of following the Most High's commandment, being obedient, staying on mission, she she yielded to her desire, and then Adam yielded to his desire also. And so they fell out of mission. They were cut off. They were kicked out. Now they became... Um, in a word, in a, in, a, in, a, in a phrase, they became uh, members of the congregation of the dead. And you can, you can look that up in the New Testament, that congregation of the dead. I think it's also in uh, Proverbs. But let's move forward. Um, let's talk about Israel, the children of Israel. And I want to jump back and forth, and that's why I said these concepts of in the likeness and the image, uh, breath of life. Um, we we got to uh, you got to look up those concepts. You got to you got to kind of get a good feel of those concepts. We see similar to Adam and Eve, the Adamites, Israel. Um, was brought out of Egypt, right? They were brought out of Egypt and they were shaped into the, reshaped into the image and the likeness of the Most High in those 40 years in the wilderness. Those 40 years in the wilderness, the Most High was breathing that breath of life, that kind of life to Israel through Moses with the Torah. For 40 years, he was shaping Israel 
into his image, into his likeness, so that when he put them back in this land, put them in the land that flowed with milk and honey, they would understand what their mission was. And so if we go to Judges chapter 2, real quick, Judges chapter 2, starting at verse 19. Judges chapter 2, starting at verse 19. Now this is after they're in the land. They've already, the Most High has already delivered them into that land that's flowing with milk and honey. He's already shaped them back into his image, his likeness. He's breathed that Torah back into them. And now they're in their land. Joshua has already brought them across the Jordan. Starting at verse 19, and it reads, And it came to pass when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their father in the following in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doing, nor from the from the stubborn from their stubborn way. Verse 20. And the anger of Yah was hot against Israel. And he said, Because that this people have transgressed my covenant which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, have not stayed on mission, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of Yah to walk therein as their fathers did keep or not. Are they going to stay on mission? Or are they going to yield to their desire? Now, if you remember uh, in uh, Deuteronomy, I think it's in chapter 12, where uh, Moshe is telling Israel, when you go into the land that the Most High promised your forefathers, I don't want you to learn any of the ways of the nations that's round about you. You are Quadash. You are holy. You're separate. You're different. I want you to act the way that I breathe this Torah into you. I want you, when those people see you, that they see me. That was the mission. It's one of the missions, one of the main missions, is that we're, so, we're, we're in the likeness and the image of the Most High with Torah, and we're supposed to represent the Most High. We're supposed to represent the Most High in that way we live our life, this kind of life. And so he left these other nations there, just like he put that tree there, just like he had that manna on the seventh day, to see if we're going to stay on mission or we're going to yield to our desires, to our emotions. Let's jump to the present. 400 years in captivity in this country. 400 plus years in the land of our captivity. Right now, we're in that wilderness. We're not under hard bondage anymore, but we're still in that land of our captivity. We call it the, you know, like in the wilderness. And right now, we're being reshaped into the Mosai's image with this Torah. We're being breathed back into the breath of a particular kind of life. That breath of life. And just like in the wilderness, those who could not control that emotion and stay on mission did not get delivered into the land of milk and honey, back into that land of paradise, back into that land of pleasure. So the warning today is, if we want deliverance back into that land that the Most High promised us, that we have to be able to control our emotions. We have to be able to, to determine whether 
we're going with our emotions or if we're going with the with the mission. And like I said in the beginning, sometimes the mission and the emotion is the same thing. But our challenge, our test, like the tree in the midst of the garden and like the manna on the seventh day and like the nations that are around about us, that test is if we're going to first identify the emotion that's driving us and then if we're going to stay on mission, if that emotion is taking us away from Torah or if that emotion is leading us in a direction that's not Torah, that's not our way of life, that's not our breath of life. That's the warning, Mr. Uh, I hope you got something from it. And all praises to the Most High. Hello, Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praises to the Most High. The rock is quite our name. Uh, and Adon, I like how you uh, actually brought out that uh, about sometimes uh, the motion is the mission. I think that's very detailed. Um, and that's the reason why when we was covering uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, in the book of Matthews about those that are by the wayside and how some people fall out of the truth because they did not have understanding. Um, and so since they don't understand certain things, they fall away whenever we're actually doing what the mission calls us to do. So, uh, and, and a lot of times, like like what Ima was saying, she did not allow the emotion of any of her family, you know, cause her to break Yah's Shabbat even though they're still in the emotion. So the emotion of love and creator was her mission of keeping the Shabbat set apart regardless of whatever. So um, we have to understand, like you said, a lot of times the, the, the emotion itself can be the mission, you know, because there are emotions that the Most High tell us to tap into. And in order to be a man after Yah's own heart, like David, you have to love what the Most High love and you have to hate what the Most High hate. And when we actually start doing those things, that emotion is the mission. And then a lot of people are offended because we are actually trying to be a cod with the creator. So I think this is a very, very uh, uh, good uh, two-minute warning. Uh, total about Dome, for uh, uh, joining those two thoughts together. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Mr. McCod. This time we're going to open the floor uh, for any praise, uh, reports, testimonies, song on your heart. You know, uh, the floor is open. Um, you know, we have the hand raise feature. If you want to raise your hand or if no one is sharing, you can unmute your mic and, you know, say on if there's any praise, report, testimony, a uh, song on your heart that you would like to uh, lift up before the Most High. The floor is not open. And again, don't tarry and try to give others a chance to go first. Uh, but for the, for the sake of time, you know, we all come together on Shabbat. So somebody take your word is because you waited. So, um, okay, Francis family, the floor is yours. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Not a clear. I have a song. <clears throat> well, first, okay. So, the song, lately I've been, I guess I'll start with the testimony, then I'll read the psalm, and then I'll sing it. <clears throat> so, lately I've been having, well, not lately, but re before I was having a lot of, uh, like unclean thoughts that would just pop in my head or thoughts that weren't mine that would just pop into my head. And, um, and I would have to like fight it off, you know? So, and, and, and there were really weird, bizarre thoughts that I normally wouldn't think. So immediately I knew it wasn't like my thoughts and it was, but it was troubling me because it was happening a lot. And so, um, I started reading the Psalms and there was a Psalm that stuck out to me, which is Psalm 13. And um, and so I'll read Psalm 13, but I found a song that also in Hebrew, which is how I'm learning. Um, in Hebrew, there was a song or a song for that. So I'm gonna say the song, and then I'm gonna sing the Hebrew version of it. I'm gonna try to sing the Hebrew version of it, and then that'll be uh, my testimony. So um, Psalm 13. <clears throat> It says, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thy, thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? 
having sorrow in my heart daily. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So that's um, a song that recently, those thoughts that used to pop in all the time, now that song plays just like in Hebrew, like in my mind. So now those thoughts don't pop in my head. It's replaced with this song. And so this is the song. <clears throat> I, I, I get nervous. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Adana Yahua Tishkaheni Netzak Adana Tastiret Faneka Mimeni Adana Ashi Tetzot Benafshi Yagon Viva Vio Mama Dana Yoromoi Vialai Happy Taneni Yahuwah Elohai Yahuwah Elohai Hari Rai Nai Penishan Hamavet <coughs> Pen Yomba Oivi Yahoti Saraya Gilu Pen yomar oivi, yahotiv seraya gilu, ki emot. Va ani vehasteha, vehasteha vatasi. Yakeli bi, yakeli bi, bishu ateka. Ashir ala yahua, ki gamal ala. Ashir ala yahua, ken yashir ala yahua, ki gamal ala. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have any praise that we'd like to lift before the Father before we move forward? All right. Uh, uh, Don, y'all cry by asking you, Monitor, the floor. I'm going to step away for about five minutes and I'll be back. Uh, do you ready to go to the floor? Okay. Uh, Davion, y'all want the floor? Yeah, I, 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 Sister Jack, I was okay. going to tell her that was a beautiful song. I don't understand Hebrew or anything like that, but whatever she did, I thank her for that for that song because the kids are up and it was hype. So when she sang that song, it calmed their spirit, and I loved it. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I loved it. I loved it. They come because they hype. They, they all five of them are up. <laughs> and they're up and they're running around. And I'm telling them that I'm in class and y'all gotta be quiet. But as soon as she starts singing that song, he, the, the spirit calmed down. I ain't hear no yelling, no fussing, no run. They didn't even run through the house. They were doing that before she sang the song. They was running through the house. The mama sleeps, she trying, they trying to wake her up. I mean, it, they was all over the place. But as soon as she sang that song, it calmed their spirit down. It was, you know, it was it wasn't quiet, but it was peaceful, and I ain't had to say nothing. Oh, yeah. So I praise that. So I praise that. She did a good job, and I and I thank y'all for having her to have that spirit that she can sing that song. And don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Just sing from your heart. And she done that. She done that. And I want to appreciate. And I appreciate that. That's all I wanted to say. 
Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I close the job to throw that revival for you always giving her encouraging words and for you tell her like you say don't 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 be nervous go ahead and sing it from the heart as she always does and it's always beautiful so hallelujah toda toda ya toda ima thank you so much hallelujah you just made me cry a little bit <laughs> but toda hallelujah all praises to the most high i'm so happy that that um to hear those words it brings my confidence up a bit <laughs> so hallelujah and toda rabba Uh, Adon, Yaqua, if you could, like I said, uh, uh, monitor the room for a moment. Anyone else, if y'all have any praise reports or testimonies, the floor is still open, but I'll be back in five minutes to be ready to uh, start study. I just need to take a uh, step away for five minutes. So the floor is open, Ms. Rakai. Good job, Melissa. Shalom, shalom, your mama. Shalom, shalom. Um, there is an old song that I used to sing when I was on the gospel choir, which was several years ago. And this week, my son sent me a text with the link uh, to the song, and he said that he thought about me in the choir when um, he heard the song. So I will attempt to sing the song. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Yah, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Yah, lead me. Help me tread in the path of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. Y'all just always let me thy servant be. Lead me, oh y'all. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Yah, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Yah, lead me. Hallelujah. Ima, your voice is just so so calming. It's it's like a it's like a a warm hug, Ima. All praises to the most high. You, hallelujah. Oh my goodness, you are just too sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Told our revival. Am I sitting am I on? You want the floor? The floor is yours. Boy, this is gonna be a good Shabbat for me today. He must say that song, and that reminds me when I was in high school, when um I got lost and I couldn't and I couldn't I didn't know which way to go or which direction to go because I was lost. So, so when I when she sang that song, "Lead Me," I sang that song all the way from point A to point B, and I found my way home, and I praise y'all for that. And I pay Ema for being that so I to my remembrance. So that I can remember and tell somebody you need to sing songs. And when you lost in your direction, you need to find a song in your heart and sing it. And Ema, I thank you for that song. Because it sure brought me into my room when I was in high school. When I was lost and I couldn't find my way. And at that time, you know they ain't had no cell phones. <laughs> You know, they ain't had no cell phone. So who can I call? And I call on the most high. And he leads me and guides me to where I need to go. So 
That's what I wanted to say, because I could get long-winded, but I ain't trying to get long-winded. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Sister Jackie. <laughs> all right. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise. And that's what it is. You know, we, we come together like this in the voices and the and and the spirit of everybody. Man, that's that that's you know, it brings back the memories, it encourages, it gives us that uh, that hug. You know, that's why the most high ordered us to come together, you know, come together and sing praises to his name, you know. It it it's not, you know, we all benefit from that. But you know, praise to the most high, hallelujah. Uh ooh. Uh, I can't read that. Who's that? Oh, that's Iman Newkirk. Iman Newkirk, floor yours. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. The first song got me. The second song got me. Because I wasn't going to say anything. But I think the most high, how those songs are really encouraging. And uh, I'm like the Lord. Those songs really help me. And that's one thing I always would tell the Father, lead me and guide me. Because that's what I needed to be led, led and guided. Uh, I think the most high fun the uh, uh, true light and all the members here. I just thank you, thank you all because you're such an encouragement to me, each and every one of you. And uh, I just praise the most high for the fellowship. Praise y'all. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Boys still open. Anybody uh got a song or a praise report or can get something encouraging? The floor still open. says anything, I'm going to say hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Kiara Ima, for singing those delightful songs for us and for it to be a common ruach upon our land. So we give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High Yah. And I'd like to give Yah all praise, honor, and esteem for delivering each and every one of us through another week, for providing for us all that we have need of, food, shelter, and raiment, for the healings that he's done, for those who we've petitioned him in prayer for, and that I pray that he continues to Continue to heal those that needs healing. Um, and I just praise him that we're all here in another Shabbat. And the Shabbat is a delight. So hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm going to go forward now with the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah, Eloheinu Yahuwah Akkad. Wahabateh Yahuwah Elohecha, Bukha Lababeka, Ubeka Nefeshka, Ubeka Nedeka. Wahayu Hadabarim Ha'Allah Asha Anoki Mitzvaka Ayom Allah Babaka. Hero Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You should love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. Hallelujah. Heavenly Abba, we just say Torah Rabbah for this Shabbat day. We thank you, our Creator who have so patiently and so perfectly designed and provided for us all that we have need of, who in the very beginning you created everything before you created man. And when you created man, everything was completed and you brought him in right and introduced to a day of rest. We thank you for your Shabbat day, a day in which you were appointed from the very beginning of time, a day that you hollowed or set apart for us to worship you, a day that is Above all days, it's the holy day, Abba, that you have given us every week for us to come together and have a kodash me cry, which is a holy convocation, that we gather ourselves together, Abba, to praise, honor, and to esteem your name and to receive of your word into our love and to our heart. So we say, total about Abba, for your ruach that's amongst us, because your word says where two or three are together and agree, your Ruach will be in the midst. So, Father, I thank you for the Ruach that you have upon us when we all come together. I thank you, Father, for being such a perfect and such an awesome Elohim that 
You forgive us for sins, transgressions, and iniquities, even we don't deserve it. That you have such a perfect plan of salvation that we who have erred off the path, a path that was perfect from the beginning, that we allowed the adversary to take us off of, you've given us opportunities to return to that set-apart place. And Father, we just ask if you will lead us and guide us along the way. Y'all, if you lead us, we will not stray. Take the reign of our heart. Take the reign of our mind. Father, please take control of our emotion. Let us be in subjection unto your will and your way. Father, teach us each as individuals the mission and the purpose for our lives that you have us to walk out. But also, Father, show us the mission that we're supposed to walk out together. Your word says, behold, how beautiful it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And when you actually read it in the Hebrew, Abba, it says, how beautiful it is for them to sit together and to remain together, Abba. So, Father, we just ask if you will allow us to continue to grow in you as a Mishmaqa, as a family, that you will continue to pour your spirit out upon us, and that we remain together in you, O oh Yah. Father, do not let any of us be taken from your hand or taken off course. Any error that we make, Father, we ask for your mercy and we ask for your forgiveness. We ask if you will always redirect us to the path of righteousness, then we'll return to you. Father, let us never do anything that's too abominable that we cannot return to you because you will not accept us. Father, please do not give us over to reprobate minds. But that, Father, we will have a mind that's totally focused on you, a mind that's submissive to you, your will and your way. That our heart desires you in a relationship with you, O oh Yah. Father, in the days that we are living in, in the trying times that we're living in, we need your presence. We need your power in our lives, Abba. Father, we need your Ruach HaKodesh and your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask if you will please allow your gifts to be in the midst of the congregation, in the midst of your people, that we will have the gifts of healing, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of dreams and interpreting dreams, the gift of tongues. Father, we ask if you will allow us to not be those Hebrews that are so legalistic that we do not understand what the church means when they say fivefold ministry. Fivefold ministry is not a word that's in your scriptures. However, we understand what they were talking about, Abba. They were talking about a place where you could come to and all the Ruach of the ministry was present. The knowledge of the word, your Torah, your laws, your healing, your power, your tongues, just all the gifts that you want to pour out, Father. There are going to be some servants, some helps, some with the gift of tongues, some teachers, some preachers, some evangelists, some healers, some seers. Father, we ask him that you will allow us to yield ourselves to your Ruach and to your spirit. And as you and Yahusha not, Abba, that we will allow you to come in. That we will purge ourselves from pride and from being over-righteous. And that we will be willing to be as the wheat and move as your Ruach bloweth, as your Ruach leadeth. So, Father, lead us and give us an ear to hear. Give us a heart to Shema. Give us eyes to see and understand your power and your works amongst us. In the book of Yoel, Father, says in the end times that you poured your Ruach upon our sons and daughters and they will prophesy. Well, actually, Father, it wasn't our sons and daughters. We are the sons and daughters of those in whom you prophesied that you will pour out the Spirit upon their sons and daughters. The ancient forefathers of time past, Abba, you said you will pour out your Ruach upon their sons and daughters. So some of our parents, our grandparents, our great-great-grandparents, and our great-great-great-grandparents are sons and daughters that have been passing down from generation to generation. Whether they have full knowledge of Torah or not, some of them are only led by your Ruach. And each generation, Abba, you were revealing more and more to us that we are returning back to who we are as a people. So do not let us who have become into the knowledge of the truth and to the instructions of your Torah Speak against the Ruach that our forefathers were walking in 
And I'm not talking about the forefathers all the way back to Adam and Eve, Abraham, Yitzhak, Dawid, and Yaakov. I'm talking about our great great grandparents, Abba, who loved you and called you God, who called you El Shaddai or the Most High, or El Elyon, the Most High, God Almighty, who did not know Hebrew and who did not know their actual roots. Or if they did, they did not know how to teach it fully to us. But they knew how to call upon you, Abba. They knew how to call upon you in spirit and truth. There was healings that was done amongst them, Abba, that only you could do, Abba, from Shemayim. And we are not returning to times, Father, where it's so grim and it's so dark, it's so negative and it's so evil, that if we do not trust in you, oh, yeah, we are doomed. So, Father, we're asking you to teach us how to trust in you. That you use us as your vessels of light. That you let your power and your work be done through us. That you send us to those whom you want us to be sent to. And you send those who you want to bring out of the world unto us. That we speak words of life into them. And we speak words of life into one another. I thank you for the encouraging Ruach and the encouraging words of Sister Jackie today. Who has given encouragement to our Iman, to our sister, Kiara. We ask, Father, that we always be encouraging one to another. That we encourage others to esteem your name and to lift up song unto you, Abba. Because we never understand how important our praise is to you, but not only to you, but to one another. That the words that we speak may heal someone. That the words that we speak while we praise you may deliver someone. May save someone. May deliver someone from depression and stress, from more worship, from anger. As we continue to have these holy convocations and these gatherings, Abba, we just ask of you renewing us a new heart and you continue to increase your Ruach within us. Father, we ask if you would please continue to be with our dear brother Roland. Please continue to touch and heal him, Father. Continue to strengthen him. Father, we ask for Sister Val. Father, we heard a testimony last night that she's feeling better from COVID but still have some shortness of breath. Father, we ask if you would just touch her and heal her. Totally, Abba. We ask if you would restore her. Restore her joy and restore her strength. By Hashem Yahushua. Father, we thank you for the testimony of Elder Kenneth, that both of his sisters that he petitioned for prayer during the week, they have been delivered. They have returned home or they're doing better, and they're still awaiting some reports. But we ask if the reports are continually good, Abba, that we can continue to esteem your name. Father, I ask if you will watch over Alma while she's traveling, while she's on the road, and you will keep her safe. Please keep a hedge of protection around her. Father, I ask for all the Knesset, all the Israel scattered throughout the four, four corners of the earth. If you will bless us with your Ruach, and you bring a oneness upon us that we would denounce selfishness and pride, that we would denounce every false way, that you will increase the ruach or the spirit of humility, the spirit of meekness, the spirit of patience, the spirit of long suffering, that we will all deny the lust of the flesh, variance and strife, arguments and debates. That anything we do, Father, we do to esteem your set apart name. Father, we ask if you would for Adol Malachia, if you would please calm him, Father, as he works in a climate that is hostile on a daily basis. We ask if you would calm his Ruach. We ask if you would strengthen him. We ask if you would put a hedge of protection around him. That he can be comforted in your Ruach, Abba. Keep him physically safe. Keep him mentally safe. And keep him spiritually safe. And Father, keep his Ruach renewed in you on a daily. I ask if you will continue to let his Isha be a great help unto him. That while she's caring for the little one, she's still able to be a help unto him to keep him encouraged and to keep him going on daily. To keep him covered in Teflon. To keep his name ever before you. I ask if you will bless their home. Bless their being. Hallelujah. Father, as Madeline has a suffered loss, we're asking your Kodash name if you will comfort her and her family as they're going through bereavement. I ask if you will continue to be mindful of Tevin, 
who suffers from seizures from time to time. They don't fully understand what may be going on with him, but Father, we thank you for the joy that him and his Esau shares in you, O Yah, and that you are strengthening their evil now, their faith in you, and that no matter what they're going through, they're standing firm in you. I ask if you will strengthen to me and Tevin that they will be strong in you. They'll be strong in body, they'll be strong in mind, they'll be strong in the flesh and soul. Baruch haba Hashem, Yahuwah HaGadah, Allahim, bless me, your set apart name. Mm-hmm. Provide for them all that they have need of, Abba. Mm-hmm. And allow them to have a testimony that's going to be heard on high. That they will share their testimonies as they're going through different things and as you're delivering them through those things, Abba, that they will always esteem your name and be a light unto others. Father, I ask if you will continue to be with Adon Abadal as he's on Shabbat, as he's one with us, Abba, but he has a mission to make sure that those who do not speak English, those who speak El Spanish, that they're being able to receive your word on Shabbat I ask if you will be with them on this Shabbat, that your teachings go forward, that it reaches the mark, that the mission is achieved, that each heart and soul receive that which they need. And I ask if you will pour into him all that he pours out, and you keep him rooted, Abba, keep him growing. I ask for Mori Dawood and all those at the remnant in VA, and all those on the remnant that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, if you will be with them on this Shabbat. Father, we praise, honor, we esteem your name. Mm-hmm. Father, I ask for all our emo, our mothers, uh, imams, for all our zakanim, or all our elders. I ask if you will bless them with health and strength and continue to increase them in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Continue to let them be a good example unto the younger generation. Remove the spirit of fear from them, a fear of hurting our feelings when they have something from you to say. Mm-hmm. But give them the ruach of wisdom that they say it in a way where it's not intentionally offensive, but that they say it in a way to encourage us by way of warning that we need to change certain behaviors or that we can do things in a better or a way that is different that will be set apart unto you. I ask if you will continue to strengthen our imams and our elders. For all the mores, I ask if you will allow us to have a oneness of ruach, a oneness in doctrine, that we will teach that which you have given us, Abba, that will lead people unto you. And Father, I ask while we are going through establishing or trying to establish a righteous council of elders, a righteous group of mores, a righteous body to govern our community so that we can have accountability so that the sisters that have been hurt by wicked elders, by wicked mores, by wicked brothers, by even other wicked sisters, so that can be ceased and stopped in Israel. Father, we ask that you will lead us into the right elders, the right mores, the right imams to join in with us so that we can be a body that's joined together for your purpose, Abba, for the oneness in our community. Lead God and direct us, Abba, along the way so that we will not stray, that we can lead others into you. Father, I ask from the oldest to the youngest of our Knessets, if you would touch and bless them, Abba, and keep them strong in you, O Yah. Blessed be your name, Yahuwah, and blessed be who comes in your name, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, and amen. Blessed be the name of Yah. Amen. All right, Mishpachah, once again, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. All praise be to the Most High Yah, our Creator, our Redeemer. We're going to continue on. Uh, like we said, we're staying on theme right now. So we're still focusing on where we was leaving off at last week. We was focusing on um, emotions, emission, the, the mission, the mission minded versus emotional minded. And so we took a, a, a journey down into talking about emotions specifically. So I'm going to continue speaking on emotions today. Will you do me a favor? Will you go? Um, oh, wait. Let me give me that. Give me that water first. Thank you. And can you go and give me an iPad charger because I'm about to go dead. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate you. Sleek out, Mr. Rikai. So we're going to be picking up today um, back on our topic in regards to emotions. Uh, so today we're going to be picking up uh, in the book of Mishli of Proverbs. Um, and one of the things that we are focusing on is uh, emotions are are 
natural, okay? Um, the Most High has emotions. The Most High has been called jealous. Uh, the Most High is loving. You know, the Most High is merciful. The Most High has different emotions. Um, the Most High has anger. So we're created in his likeness and his image, meaning we're going to have emotions ourselves. So it's a very natural thing for us to have emotions. One of the things that we was covering, though, was that we should never allow our emotions to drive us out of the point of serving the Most High or driving us to the point of sin or breaking the commandments of the Most High. So we have to know how to keep our emotions in check. And now I'm tying in with where Adon Yaquab came from today and how to know when our emotion is actually mission-driven emotion or if we're just in our emotions and we're being emotionally driven. So uh, we're going to continue on um, this week and focus on emotions because we want to make sure that we're temperate and that we do have self-control and that we do keep our emotions in check because our emotions are the very things that could cause us to lose our salvation if our emotions take us outside of the purpose and the mission of the Most High. And we've covered last week, there's many different emotions. Uh, um, there's uh, happiness, sadness, depression, anxiety, proud, jealousy, love, you know, anger. Um, there's, there's many different types of emotions, and each emotion has uh, different effects, you know. Um, and as I covered last week, uh, certain emotions can also affect our well-being and our health, the well-being of our mindset, um, the well-being of, of, of our physical. Um, one thing that um, uh, in regards to, um, for those who don't know, and some of you do know, uh, that my, my father has dementia. And they tell you that dementia is one of those things that over time it, it may progress and it may get worse, but dementia is different in everyone. There's some similarities in patients that have dementia, um, but the speed and how rapid it progresses it differs um, in different people. Um, but they said one of the things that helps it is the conditions that they're living in. Are they in an environment where they're loved? Is there, is there love? Are they in a stress-free environment? You know, being around family, being around those they love, uh, having some joy and having some happiness around them, it actually is good for their condition versus being around a negative surrounding, being in a negative environment, uh, being in a, a depressed or stressed way that actually makes it progress even faster. So if that happens in someone that has dementia, what do you think happens still in us who, who may think that our minds is normal? We just might not have been diagnosed for certain things as of yet, and there are certain things that we could do that may, may cause us to have certain ailments ourselves if we allow ourselves to allow our emotions to consume us. So we want to go back to uh, Mishnah of Proverbs, uh, as we was in last week, but today we're going to be picking up in Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter 19 and 11. Um, Kanaki, if you get that for me, and uh, Adon Yosef, if you will get for me Proverbs 29 and 22, I want to try to cover a lot of this today, so I'll be having some of the Akim help uh, Kanaki out with the reading today. So Kanaki, if you give me Proverbs 19 and 11, and uh, uh, Yourself, if you'll get for me Proverbs 29 and 22, Kanaki, I would like for you to go first in that order. Proverbs 19, verse 11. The discretion of a man defer his anger. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. It says, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger. And it is his esteem or his glory to pass over a transgression. So it says, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger. So that's being how circumspect, how careful a man is. Um, is, uh, is he going to be one that's circumspect? Is he going to watch to his goings? Because the commandment already tells you to be circumspect. So a man that has uh, has his discretion, he will be very circumspect. He will be very careful. He will be very cautious. He, he will be aware. He will be guarded. Okay? So I'm going to read one of the definitions of discretion. It says, the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. That's just uh, from the Oxford American Dictionary. Given an example of discretion, it says the quality of behaving 
or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information, right? So this is saying a person is always going to be trying to be mindful of what they're saying, what they're doing, what they're thinking, how they're behaving, you know, how not to uh, uh, give give off information they're not supposed to give off. So now I'm saying the discretion of a man does what? Defer his anger. So if a man is, 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 is has discretion, he can also keep himself calmer or he can actually defer or throw his anger off. And it is his esteem or his glory to pass over a transgression. So if a person can keep themselves from becoming angry, they can keep themselves out of transgression because a lot of times when anger consumes us, that anger provokes us to not do an act that will be a, a transgression to the Most High or against the Most High by how we re react to one another when we're angry. When we're angry, we have left self-control. Anger may consume us, we have less self-control, so that anger may make us do negative things that may make, cause us to sin, but it says the discretion of a man would defer his anger, and it is the glory to pass over the transgression. Let's jump to Proverbs 29. And 22. Come on, and James 1 and 18 through 20. Proverbs 29 and 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man abound in transgression. Hallelujah. So it says an angry man. This, this right here is basically telling me an angry man is not a good thing to be. Because it says an angry man stirs up strife. And a furious man abounds in transgression. So let you know, an angry man is one that would be causing the strife. If I'm mad, <laughs> I want everybody to be mad. If I'm upset, I, I need everybody to be upset. So I want to go to the assembly today, and I want to cause the disruption on Shabbat. I want them to feel my anger, because I want to get them angry also, so I can interrupt the ruach that's there. Everybody all happy and joyous and Sister Jackie giving praise reports about how good Kiara's singing. I'm going to bring my negativity there. I'm going to disrupt that ruach. That's how angry people think. They're not literally thinking that's what they're going to do, but that's what they come to do. If I ain't happy, if I'm mad, I want everybody else to have a bad day also. So it says an angry man stirs up strife. That's what they do. And a furious man abounds in transgression. Means what? He remains in transgression. Once a person becomes furious, they're always in transgression. They're going against the commands of the Most High. They're going against the unity of the brotherhood and the sisterhood. They're going up and down as tail bearers because they're mad. Because they're not they're, 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 they're not discreet. They're not, they're not, they don't have discretion. They're not circumspect. They have now got so angry that their anger or their emotion has taken them off the course or taken them off the path of righteousness. And it says, and they remain. In transgression. Yosef, give me verse 23 as well. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So, remember when, uh, just tied it with a Don Yaqua blessing? Sometimes the actual emotion is the mission. And sometimes the emotion is just the emotion that takes you off course of the mission. So it says, a man's pride shall bring him low. So prideful is something that the Most High tell us not to be. So if a person walks in the rock of pride, it's going to bring him low because the Most High is going to bring them down. But it says, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So we've come last week that Moses was a very meek and a very humble man. And him being very meek and very humble, that's the mission or the goal that the Most High wants his word to do for all of us. He wants us to be very loving and kind. He wants us to be self-controlled. He wants us to have discretion so that we don't say the wrong thing at the wrong time to be offensive. But we say the right things at the right time in the right manner because we're nice and calm and humble with it. And it says again, so the pride of a man should bring him low, but honor should uphold the humble in spirit. Hallelujah. 
Let's drop that now. Let's go to the Brick Cottage Shah Kanak, y'all. Give me James 1 and 18 through 20. Yosef jump to Ephesians chapter 4, 26. We want James Kanak, y'all. Give me 1 and 18 through 20. Of his, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of all him. Okay. So this is saying in my pool. First of all, it says, of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. So first of all, what is the word of truth? It is his word. It is his Torah. It is his instructions that we should be what? a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So we are now talking about coming up on the feast of first fruits or the feast of weeks when you're going to bring your fruits up before the most high. We've already had a lesson of, 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 of fruits versus the flesh and what the fruits of the Ruach is. We're supposed to be a type of first fruits of his creatures. So we were saying that we are born again. If we're supposedly born again and we're still acting like everyone else, uh, in the world, very negative, very angry, very jealous, very prideful. What kind of fruit are we really? And whose fruit are we? But if we're going to be at first fruits, I'm going to tell you that when we when we look at the word, uh, and as we covered in our men's study, I want to go into humble, right? Humility is not always an attribute that's going to feel good to you when you're being humble. <laughs> I want you to hear that. Humility is not always an attribute that's going to feel good to you while you're being humble. Because when you look the word up for humble in Hebrew, it is the word anah. Anah is the same word that's used for afflict your nefesh or afflict your soul. So when we have the Feast of Atonement, or not the Feast of God, the Holy Day or the Day of Atonement, and on the Day of Atonement, you're told to afflict your soul, does your body actually feel good? When you can't eat that food, some people that start fasting for the first time, they get a little grumpy. It might get a little headache. That stomach growl starts getting to you. You feel, and I don't know what it is about the day of atonement fast day. Then it's a day that you're going to fast on on your own. It's a difference in how the fast feels. I'm, I'm telling you, when you prepare yourself for a fast that you want to add to creative or something, it feels a lot different than a day of atonement fast. It just does. <laughs> That day of atonement fast is a little different. It hit a little different. But the point I want you to understand is that the word for humble comes from the same word as afflict your soul, which meaning being humble does not always feel good. Being humble means when somebody else is acting a fool and you being tempered and self-control and you want to make sure you're remaining humble, I really want to pop him in his mouth right now for being so disrespectful in front of these women, in front of these sisters, in front of these children. But that would show a bad example to the Mishmachah and to those that are by the wayside that don't fully understand why I'm about to pop him in his mouth. So I'm going to take the law. I'm going to remain humble. That takes a level of discretion. <laughs> so humble don't always feel good. So sometimes when you see people out here with that humble big smile on their face, understand the smile is them trying to hold back that aggression <laughs> that wants to come forth. And the reason why I want to bring that out to you is because when you're feeling that, I want you to understand what you're feeling. It's very natural for you to still feel the anger coming up within you and remain humble at the same time because humility is also a form of temperance because you're, su you're suppressing or you're submitting to the will of the Most High while your own will may be to do something different. They're talking junk to me. I need to pop them in the mouth. I need to make them hush. I need, I need to react. I don't want to look like the one that, uh, uh, that's weak. Whereas in the Most High said your power is in what? It's in your humility. And you look strong. The humble is going to be the one that's honored. The proudful one is going to be the one that's going to be what? Brought low. As Yaquab highlighted uh, last night about uh, about Saul, you know, the Most High is the one who actually brought Saul down. The Most High brought him down. David didn't have to bring him down. The Most High brought him down. So David was running around a humble little guy, you know, that could have defeated Saul if he wanted to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. He would have beat him. But he ran. He remained humble. Even though he could have said, you know what, man, I'm tired of running from this guy. He just keep pursuing me. But he remained what? He remained in humility. He remained humble. But that is also a, a form of temperance. So being humble does not always mean it's going to feel good. But when you look at
that the scriptures is also something that a first fruit is supposed to have. We're supposed to be different than everyone else. So our humility is a strength that we're supposed to have. And we're supposed to understand that while I'm being humble, the reason why I'm taking so much from this person is because I already have Yah. I already know Yah. And if I already have Yah and I already know Yah, then I'm a type of first fruit that's supposed to show them I'm not going to respond like that anger that they're showing me because really they want somebody to give them a hug. And see, that's what we got to learn sometimes too, Mr. McCarr. Sometimes when people is going off, it's because they try to hold back them tears and they don't want to look soft. But I'm going to tell you, definitely in a man, a man don't like when you see him cry. So somehow a man got to let that tough side show. But sometimes if a brother can just be humble and let that joker talk out of junk and still say, you know what, I, I'll be that, I'll be that puncher bag for you, man, but I love y'all. Get it off your chest. That starts to weaken that brother that's coming with all that anger, with all that pride, and it may break him down. And just embrace him, get a brother hug, and he may be delivered. The same with a sister. But that's what a first fruit is supposed to do. Now, 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 let me tell you, that don't mean going up to somebody that you see is definitely irate and foolishness, and you go try to give them a hug. But y'all mistaken what I'm saying. I'm talking about a brother or sister that you may know that may be acting out of character, and they just going off popping all that hot air, and you just remaining calm. But I ain't telling you to go and break them when you see them throwing blows. That's not what I'm telling you to do. But you use soft words to abate or to put out that anger, all right? Because we're first fruits. We should conduct ourselves differently. It says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now, y'all tell me the characteristics of the majority of Israel. Do the majority of Israel that we know, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm going to pull a, a play from Iman Audrey's book after what Maury Dahoud said last night. Don't always see yourself as David. <laughs> you know, we might need to see it. Am I the one looking like Saul? Is Israel, those whom we know, are they slow to speak <laughs> and quick to hear? What is most Israel? What is most of us? Most of us just wait for our time to speak. We ain't trying to listen to nothing or nobody. And our emotion is so bad ready to come back with a comeback that we're not even receiving the words that's being spoken for us to have the conversion that we need. We already preset with our comeback line of disrespect or whatever it is, we're so quick to speak and we're so quick to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to speak that we don't even listen, that if we really listen to word tells you don't interrupt the brother or sister in the midst of their speech. But a lot of times we're always interrupting somebody to get our point across. When I want to get my point, well, no, the point was they already had the floor. So they should have been getting their point across and you should have been listening. Because the word tells you to be what? Quick or swift. Be quicker to listen than you are to speak. Be quick to listen and what? Slow to speak. Sometimes you need to let somebody say you marinate for a moment. And because you're slow to respond does not mean that you don't have a response or that they are right or they shut you down. It just may mean that hey, let me meditate so I can go through and examine myself real quick before I respond. Did what they say to me have validity? Am I actually the way they say I am? Or not. And when you self-reflect, you may see, you know, oh, I see why they're saying that. I do uh, have this uh, this negativity within me. I may be giving off a bad ruah. If several people are saying it, it may not be anything that I noticed, because as we covered last night with Shaul, Shaul still thought y'all was on his side and y'all was the one leading him, but it was an emotion leading him. So when we see these examples in the scriptures, then if everyone around us is now starting to feel like I'm giving off a negative vibration, Maybe I need to self-reflect and tell them, look, I'll get back with you. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start looking at myself for a moment and I'll get back with you later. Instead of, oh, no, I don't. I don't. And, and immediately your response is already showing <laughs> the attitude come forward or the negativity come forward. So just be slow to speak. But it says, be what? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slower to what? Be slow to wrath. Be slow to wrath. Because we're quick to wrath, and we've already covered in the book of Mishli or Proverbs that a man that's always in anger and things like that, and he abounds in what he abounds in transgression. He's going to stir up strife. He's going to abound in in, uh, in transgression. It says, "For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of El Elohim." Mishpachah, that sh these 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 verses here, uh, nineteen and twenty, should be memory verses for us. And when I say memory verses, memory verses that we take. The heart. So I'm going to read it again, then I'm going to move on. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren and sisters, 
Let every man and woman be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Let us learn to apply that. Verse 20 is even more important. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Elohim. Oh, that's just me. That's just how I am. I ain't going to let nobody talk to me any kind of way. I'm going to let them know. Y'all seen that kind of behavior before? From brothers and sisters in Israel that's supposed to have Torah? They're more concerned with their identity and how they ain't no punk, no chump, and they ain't soft that their mannerisms is always negative, but I keep the commandments. Okay, what spirit you walking in though? Because if it say for the wrath of man and what I see in you and your character always says you're full of wrath and you're full of anger, but you keep the commandments, are you keeping the commandments? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Elohim or the righteousness of a God. So if you're always in wrath, you're in transgression. You're not working the righteousness of Elohim. You're not working the righteousness of God. And will a man or woman that does not know the creator see you in your conduct and your wrathful behavior, always talking about somebody, no matter where you go. I thought this is one of them Hebrew Israelite or one of these elders or one of these mores, teachers, pastors, preachers, bishops. But when they come to the barbershop, they're always talking negative about somebody. Always full of anger about what they're going to do to somebody. But you're supposed to be a man or woman of God. Why do I want to go and follow you and you show me the same behavior that we already portray? That is because the wrath of man works not the righteousness of Elohim. The righteousness of Elohim is for us to be humble. For us to walk in his law, and his commandments. For us to love Yahuwah, our Elohim, with our whole heart, soul, and might. And the second is like unto it, that we love thy neighbor as thyself. So when we see that wrath has us abound or remaining in transgression, we should have wrath as least as possible. Now, as Yaquab, Adon Yaquab said earlier, as the Zakane spoke with wisdom, sometimes the emotion is the mission. Because when my daughter called me, well, it was this week you called about school, right? When my daughter called me this week, while I'm driving, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all got to be careful with these emotions. Because emotions may get you a speeding ticket. Emotions may get you in an accident. So make sure you get them under subjection quick. And I praise y'all that this happened because I get to see how emotions actually work. So you can have them, but make sure you control them. So my bot, which is my daughter, calls me, and I, I and we have a policy at my home that, you know, really only my Isha calls me when I'm at work. You know, the children only call me when it's an emergency. She can call me for every little thing because my day is busy. I could be climbing poles or whatever. So don't just call him with every little thing. But now if it's something of importance, then you call. If it's something that's urgent, then you call. So it's not just, can I do this or can I play the game or any of that nonsense. But if it's something urgent, then you call. So my bot calls me and she says, Daddy, I don't know what this has to do with, uh, with PE class, but in PE, they want us to go around and we have to talk about accepting each other how we are. So if somebody's transgender or bisexual, we go around because we have to learn to accept everybody. So we're having a discussion on that. That's the topic of PE. So immediately my first thing goes to what in the world they got to do with gym? What does that have to do with physical activity and you getting healthy? Why is a gym teacher worried about teaching about acceptance of somebody being a transgender and y'all going around discussing it and trying to get you all to accept this nonsense? I, I was raffled <laughs> from the thought of it. Because I'm first of all, I'm like, why is this something that's even in school anyway? Children should not be going through this. So I became a little furious at that moment. So as she's telling me, and I'm trying to explain to her, when I look back down, I've done, <laughs> my speed limit has now changed. I'm driving a little faster while I'm trying to explain to her how to handle this. And if you have any problems, you tell them how did I take it from there. But I was angry while I'm hearing this. But I still told her in a nice way. She don't see my anger. But I said, well, listen, if it comes around to you and you have to participate in that conversation, I'm giving you permission to say it this way and you say it this way and then I'll deal with the consequences. I do not accept transgender and I will not accept transgender. However, I do not judge anyone that is transgender. I do not judge anyone that chooses to be homosexual. 
But I myself cannot accept that, so I cannot be made to accept something that's not acceptable by God. It's not acceptable. So I can't accept it. But God also lets me know when it be at all possible to be at peace with every with all men. So I can be peaceful and avoid or stay away from, and I'm not going to be the one that's going to be picking at nobody, and I'm not going to be calling them gay or a sissy or nothing. I'm not going to do none of those things. But I'm not going to go on record saying that I do accept it because I cannot accept something that God said is unacceptable. And that is your response. That is your response because the word of God got to go out to schools too. And then if a problem comes up, then that's for me to deal with as the parent. But we cannot have our children around here bowing down to that that type of way. That's the same thing like, like, like what Emma was saying about the Sabbath. The Most High said this is his day and because we care what people think, we're going to now break it? Because this, this world is now switching their laws, and in the book of Daniel it says they think they've changed times and laws. They have now switched it to where homosexuality and transgender has so many rights that our rights have been stripped. We cannot even believe or stand on truth and say, I do not accept a little boy being a little girl. And I do not accept a little girl being a little boy, and I definitely do not accept any parent's thought process to think a three-year-old can say I wanted a sex change. That's foolishness and wickedness. So when you send that little girl to school that you wanted, that's really a little boy, that child ain't think he wanted to be a, 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 little, a, a, little, a little girl at five years old. You wanted a girl, but instead the most high bless you with a boy, and so since you wanted a, a girl, you've now taught the little boy to be effeminate. And you have went, and you, because this wicked government is allowing this stuff, you allow this child's sex to be changed to that which you preferred, which is what the Most High did not give you. But you're not going to force it on my child to accept something that God said they cannot accept. And that's why we as believers, and that's why I say in these dark times we're living in, we got to start actually preparing ourselves because Shaitan is knocking on all our doors, and he's coming from every angle, from the oldest to the youngest. So back to the point of the emotion. I was furious when I heard that, because I'm just like, why is that even being discussed? Let them go run their laps. Let them do their sit-ups and push-ups and pull-ups like we did. We ain't never had to talk about it. We went to the gym. We was ready. We went to run. We went to jump. We went to do jumping jacks. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did in PE class. Now you want to sit around and have an online group discussion about, well, I'm transgender, and I want you to accept me as I am. Well, I can't, but uh, but I, I, I would not think at you and I would not make you feel any type of way, but at the same time, uh, I, I, and I, I may need to do this while I'm thinking about it, and parents, y'all may need to do this also, you may need to let the school know by way of writing, and don't be offensive in your word, be very wise, be very discreet, have, use discretion in your wording. We're not trying to be offensive to anyone, but we have spiritual beliefs. There's certain things that y'all know that we've submitted, days that my children need off from school, that we're given freedom of religion. There's foods that you know my child cannot eat because of my, my religious belief that you have not been serving my child for years. And now because the law has now changed in 2020 and 21 and 19, whenever they started changing this wickedness, there was a time when my child did not come to school and have to worry about uh, saying that they did not accept homosexual or transgender. But now that y'all are introducing this, I now have this submitted. I do not want my daughter or my son partnered with one that is that way. There's others that's very accepting to that. Part them up that way. Do not force that on my child. My child will be respectful. My child will not disrespect them. But we're not into that because God said we're not into that. So please do not put my child in that space. So where's my rights? Do you want your child around? I just see somebody put up pedophilia in here. Yeah, because they are support pedophilia as well. So do you want your child around a pedophile? No, you don't. So then why do you think I want my child around someone that they should not have to be around? Now, if that person drops a pencil, my child will pick up the pencil and say, here you go. If that, that, if that child uh, 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 left their lunch home, my child would even share lunch with them. Here, I have extra. But I don't want my child being the partner with that child on a daily basis doing projects. Because it's two different ruots that I don't want to mix. So, again, back to what I was saying. But my, my, my uh, furiousness that came up in me for that moment made me start to speed. Because I was no longer focused on driving. I was not focused on how to tell my daughter how to handle the situation. So now going forward, if something like that comes up again, I may tell her to wait for a moment, let me pull over so that I can hold this conversation.
because while I was driving, I started speeding, okay? So that's why it's important to control your spirit, you know, because it can cause you to go off. Even when it's a right emotion, make sure you know how that emotion may affect your being, all right, and your safety. Okay, so let's move forward um, to Ephesians 4 and 26. Who pulled that script? Did I already give that? You got that one come out, y'all? I got it more, right? Okay, Joseph, yeah, let's look at Ephesians 4 and 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither so give place to the devil. Yeah, so be ye angry but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, this is something that I think a lot of us may need to work on. If the scriptures say, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, right? Then why are we still mad 10 years later? So we still got some repenting to do. Still, like, still seem like we have some converting to do. It says, uh, be ye angry and do what? Sin not. So stuff can make us mad. Stuff can make us upset. But when we get angry and we get upset, we should still not sin. That does not give us a license to sin because I'm mad. It does not justify me killing someone because I'm mad. It says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So if you're angry and that state of wrath has come upon you, it says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Before that sun go down, you need to have found that peace of calm. That's why I say total rebound for all that's taking place today thus far. As uh, as uh, as Miss Jackie said, this is going to be a good Shabbat. Why? Because she had already said how the song of Kiara sung calm the children in the house. The song calm the children in the house. Now we're talking about being angry and sitting out. We need to find out what is going to calm us when we're angry. Because if we don't need the sun to go down upon our wrath, what is going to calm me down before that sun go down? So that I do not remain in wrath. It says, he who abounds in wrath abounds in sin. So if I stay in that wrath when the sun goes down, and I, I meditate in that wrath overnight, and I wake up the next morning with that same wrath, and I go down another sunset, that anger is just doing what? Festering. It is growing. The fire is being kindled more and more within me, and we're going to end up doing something foolish. So as Yosef went on to the next verse, it said, neither give place to the devil, because if we'll let the sun go down upon our wrath, who do we not give place to? We've given the devil dominion or rule over us, because he's the one who wants us to be angry. Yes, you have the emotion. You can be angry, but please do not let your anger cause you to sin. And please, by all means, find a way to let that wrath go down before the sun go down. If it's a conversation that you're having with a loved one, and y'all can't get to a point of resolve before that sun go down, say, hey, let's table that. Let's just drop that whole thought process right now. Let's go do something fun. Because we can see that the time is left in the day the only thing we're going to do is we're going to get madder before the sun goes down. So let's find a way to ease that so that we don't take the wrath until the next day. And we can come back and try to deal with it some other time. Pray about it. Well, maybe I need to deny myself. I need to deny. Maybe I need to fast the rest of the night. And I need to pray to the most high. That way my body is weakened. It's not full of food and full of anger. Now it's being weakened and it's going to allow the spirit to come in to humble me out. But we need to play some soothing Hebrew music. Because whether we want to accept it or not, it's in the scriptures. Music can either provoke you to foolishness if it's negative mu music, but it's a nice, soothing melody, nice, soothing song of God, it can actually calm you down. Play you some play you some hymns. Kiara gave you what she did. I was reading that, then I went to the Hebrew song of that. And it helped me get that, that, that thing that I knew was not my thoughts in subjection. It calmed me back down and erased those thoughts. That's what we may need to do. Let's drop that. Now, let's jump to Matthews chapter 6 and 13. I want to focus on another, uh, another emotion. Go to Matthew 6 and 31. And Yosef, go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. 
So we're going to Matthew 6 and 31 first. Matthew 6, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Read on. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things for itself. Sufficient unto the days the evil thereof. So it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith all shall we be clothed? So right now, I guess you're saying, well, Samat, what does that have to do with, uh, uh, with any emotion? Well, when it says, therefore, take no thought, when you go to thought, one of the words there that's going to be uh, uh, for thought is going to come from the Greek, which is going to be G3309, G3309, which is to be anxious about. To be anxious about, okay? So, and then another word that's written there is, uh, which is going to be made, which is going to be 3361, is a primary participle of qualified uh negation, um, denial, um, express an absolute denial, um, implying a negative answer to forbid or forbear. So don't be sitting there anxiously thinking negatively. Don't be worried. Is what it's basically telling you. Don't be anxiously sitting there thinking negatively about, oh, when am I going to get my next meal or where my clothes going to come from? Don't worry so much. We have to have faith in God. What is one thing that God has promised every man? Food, shelter, and raiment. Food, shelter, and raiment. So then I guess we would say then, did a homeless man eat today? Well, if we passed him, he should have. See, we got to start learning how God's word is fulfilled in the earth. If there's someone that is homeless and they're without food, those that have food should be the one that's doing what? Sharing food. Because then the Lord even tells you that what? When you have your field planted, that there's a portion of yours that's for the homeless. That's for those that are without. You're supposed to share. So if we are a type of first fruits, we should be some of the ones that are actually helping those that are without so that their trust in God can increase. We don't know where they pray to God last, but if we're doing our role and our function, and we're asking the Most High to reveal to us who we're supposed to help. When Maury Dawood had, uh, 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 a couple of months ago, after he did the cry out, um, and, we, <laughs> and we had some ignorant people come online with this too. I mean, it was always gonna be ignorance amongst us. But Maury Dawood, after he did the cry out, he also did a, a, a thing where he said, uh, I want everyone to feed the homeless, you know, for this month. Let us feed the homeless and share with us, not the name, not the location, not by video, but how many homeless did you help this week? How many homeless did you help today? How many did you feed so that we have know how much the work is going out? You have people come on the post saying, oh, you ain't supposed to do your arms before man. Brother, we know that. He ain't say make no video or do that. It's just knowing that, listen, we have a Facebook community. And we all say we believe is in God, whose name is Yah, correct? So I'm trying to encourage, as me, as a shepherd, all those that are coming on my page to go and do what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be going, like, let us come together as one and let us feed the homeless. And then I just want you to share how many homeless you fed today, how many homeless you fed this week, so we can see the work of God that's being done throughout the, throughout the nation. So that we can say that in North Carolina, that 50 people a day, 50 believers have fed one person a day, which means that 50 more people who used to do not have meals, who have had meals in Wilmington, North Carolina. But in Raleigh, North Carolina, 70 people have been fed. 
in Virginia, in Suffolk, 20 people have been fed. In Virginia Beach, 100 people have been fed. In Richmond, 200 people have been fed. But that is more than what has been going on. It's just us having a recording or a record to see that we have inspired someone to actually go out. So even though he put it out, I'm going to tell you, you got to be slow to speak and quick to listen. So my Isha, I just stopped doing it because, you know, sometimes I glance what's going on. I don't always fully see everything. So when my Isha is like, oh, I, I, I forgot to go uh, 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 get something to take to the home, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, you remember Maureen Dawood said, you know, for us to feed someone, I didn't feed somebody homeless today. I'm like, oh, you know, I forgot about that. But she remembered it. So if she would go, whether she brought herself something from a, a restaurant or not, she was also making sure that she brought extra to give to someone that is homeless. Because while that homeless man is out there praying to God, God has service in the earth that's supposed to be delivering him some food. So when it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall you eat? You shouldn't be all stressed out and worried about where your next meal is coming from. You should have faith in the most high that you're going to have a next meal because you are walking in, a, in, in appliance and in accordance to his law, steps, commandments. And if you believe and you trust in God, then God is going to make sure that you have what? You're going to have these things. But do also notice that God also knows how long you can go without food. So even if you may be hungry today, you still may not have anything to eat today. Maybe that can be uh, contributed to a fast. And you may go a couple of days without something to eat. But God is not going to let you go to the point of death where your next meal is not going to come. When it says take no thought about what you should eat. There's people, I'm, I'm riding around right now in my work truck with some pants that's brand new that I ordered. Praise y'all that I dropped some sizes that I can't get in them anymore. Well, I can still get in them, but they don't stay up. So I said I want to give the pants to someone, so I try to give them to several people. They said they're not that size. But the point being is, it may not be what you want to wear, but there will be somebody that will provide you with some clothes. So don't be sitting there all stressed out about what I'm going to wear, where I'm going to get some clothes from. The most I say, don't worry about that. But what should we be focused on? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So my brothers and sisters that allow the spirit of anxiety, that allow the spirit of depression, that allow these things to come upon us sometime, just know that in the word of God it tells us, don't let that come upon you. Don't worry yourself into anxiety. The Most High is with you. The Most High loves you. The Most High knows what you need. And the Most High is going to provide for you what you need. But be slow to speak. Swift to hear. Sometimes if we're listening, God is trying to talk to us. He's trying to speak. But if we're moving too fast and we're not listening, we may not hear him trying to tell us where to go to receive that in which he already has provided for us. But do not worry. Do not let anxiety, and listen, anxiety attacks are very real. They are very real. When anxiety comes upon us, you know, I'm not one that really experiences anxiety attacks, but I've seen people go through them. I've seen people lose their breath. They start breathing differently. That worry comes in, and I don't fully understand it myself how it does, but I do know that anxiety or that worry or whatever it is, when they say anxiety attacks, they are real. And they can come on, they can trouble. But I've seen people have to go to the hospital for anxiety attacks. Because it's not actually the anxiety attack itself, but it's the condition that has been placed on your body that now a person is thinking that something may be going on with your heart. It could be something going on with your breathing. So now you're going to get calmed down. You need something to calm you down so that your blood pressure can come back down to normal. But the creator is telling us, don't worry. So when we feel those anxiety attacks come on us, Pray to the Most High. Quote scripture. Calm down. And when I say I'm not one to have anxiety attacks, I'm not one to have anxiety attacks. But I have finally, for the first time, experienced a little anxiety attack. And I believe the Most High let me experience it for the sake of being able to know what it feels like when someone else goes through it. And what anxiety attack came upon me was during the climate of this COVID-19. And I'm going to share it with you. During the time of COVID-19, 
See, this world is pushing the spirit of fear. And so now there's natural symptoms such as allergies and things that you have already had every year normally that you can have those things. But now because this place is renewing your mind and think that everything is a COVID symptom, mm -hmm. you may then start saying, oh my, why am I feeling like this? Is it COVID? <laughs> is it COVID? Now I'm going to share with y'all an anxiety attack that I had, right, Mr. McCall? <laughs> and I might get rebuked afterward because I didn't share it. I didn't share it when I was going through it at, at home, and I still yet to have shared. It. Let me mute my mic for one second because let, let this train go by sleep. Okay, I'm going to try to carry on. This one is going to be a little bit long, but I hope they don't blow the horn anymore. So, um, my anxiety attack happened uh, back when we lost our beloved brother, which is before we lost our beloved brother, but when Dawid first uh, went to the hospital, the first night he went to the hospital, or, or, or the first night when I actually went out to the hospital, was going out to try to comfort the family. So, you know, I had to come from work, and I got out to the hospital a little late. So I went out to the hospital with his family. So the climate is COVID is high. So of course my Isha is saying, you know, it's COVID climate that we're in. You know, uh, you have to be, you have to be careful, you have to be safe. You know, so I'm like, I'm going to have my mask on. I'm not going to get close to anyone, but I'm just going to try to speak with the uh, with the family. And I actually didn't even really enter the hospital. Um, I actually was on the outside of the hospital, out front. Everybody had mask on, and you know, I was uh, socially distanced the whole time. And you know, I have not had the fear of COVID this whole time. Right. But, you know, I left the hospital um, at a very late hour. So when I left the hospital, you know, I have a person that monitors my diet really heavy, which is my Isha. And so sometimes you don't want to have to hear someone beat you down about what you're about to eat. I'm like, well, look, you know, this was not a regular day. So, you know, I didn't get to go home and eat. So I came to the hospital. So I'm a little hungry. But now it's like one something in the morning. And yeah, y'all, I went and I stopped at Wendy's. <laughs> And I went to Wendy's and, and I ordered something. So that's some greasy food. And my e shots, like even if I eat late, <laughs> the Francis family are already laughing at me. <laughs> so my e is like, well, even if it's late, you can eat some berries or you can eat a salad. You can, like, it's too late to eat heavy food and greasy food. But this particular night, I'm hungry. And hunger is one of the things that get to you. So I broke my diet routine and I went to Wendy's and got one of them double greasy burgers. And I'm eating on the way home so that it'll be eaten by the time I got home and just come over to the house re-shower again, and go ahead and go to bed. But I got woken up out of my sleep, and I had to go to the restroom, and I'm not going to get graphic with it. But I'll just put it this way. I was stranded on the toilet bowl. And immediately while I'm stranded on the toilet bowl that night, I'm like, what in the world is going on? And I'm like, I went to the hospital. Did I get exposed to COVID? <laughs> you know, these thoughts are not running through my mind. So now I start sweating. And now I'm sweating. I'm nervous. <laughs> And that anxiety attack is taking me over because every time I tried to leave the bathroom, I had to return to the bathroom. I'm like, why do I continue to return to the bathroom? So now I'm having a panic attack. You know, I know the Most High let me get exposed to COVID because I was safe. I prayed. I was doing my service to the Most High. And so the Most High kind of, I mean, I'm like, yeah, dummy. <laughs> it's, it's that greasy burger and fries that you ate at 1 o'clock in the morning and you went and laid right down after driving home, eating that greasy burger, and you have not been eating like that, it has upset your stomach. <laughs> you do not have COVID. But the running back and forth comment, it was Calvin said, Wendy's will do it. But, you know, so the point being, that anxiety came upon me where I got a little nervous. I was a little worried to the point where I started sweating and felt like I was getting out. I'm like, do I have a fever? No, it was just that that worry came on. And then once I prayed to the most high, and I calmed down, then I slept through the night beautifully, and it was all in what I ate. For one, I should have eaten that that time of night, and because my Isha has me weaned off of that stuff, I reintroduced something to my diet at a time of morning when I don't even eat anyway, and it upset my stomach. So panic attacks are very real. So when a person is having a panic attack, Mishpachal, 
You know what I'm saying? It can cause things to trigger that body and that body to do things differently. So it stresses you. So the Most High is telling us, don't worry. Put your trust in him. Go to your knees. You pray. You ask him to deliver you when those attacks come upon you. It says, but what we should be doing is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So there should be a certain calmness on us that even when we know tomorrow may have something negative that we have to face, do not go to bed worried about that thing to the point where you don't get no sleep tonight because you worry about how it's going to turn out tomorrow. I'm worried how it's going to go in court. I'm worried how it's going to go in the doctor's appointment. I'm worried about this meeting that my supervisor said that I have to have tomorrow. And I'm about to be fired. Don't. Do not let that thing worry you overnight. You can't deal with it until it happens anyway. So go to your knees. Ask the most how to, uh, hey, be with me tomorrow. I don't know what this is going to be all about. But, Father, you know, so just prepare me for what's to come. Let tomorrow have thought of itself. But do not stress yourself out over these things that we have no control over. Put your trust in the most high. And what you should be seeking is the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to tell you, there's some people that get so stressed out that when they get stressed out, you know the last thing they can pick up is the word. Because your focus is gone. But if you renew your mind to the word of the Most High, instead of letting emotion steal your focus, your focus should be on seeking first the kingdom of heaven. And whenever oration come in, the first thing you should do is start singing some praise song, praying to the Creator and get to His Word so His Word, His song, and His prayer can calm you. All right? So we're going to drop that and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians now, uh, chapter 1 and 3. See y'all, see y'all. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. And I believe I told Kanak to get that. And Yosef, we're going to go back to, I'm going to skip some of this. Uh, well, I'm going to get a couple more scriptures. So, Kanaka, I go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. Yosef, go to Yeremiah or Jeremiah 17 and 9. Uh, Kanaka, read what you have, uh, sir. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Okay. So it says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there are among you envying, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So it's basically saying if you are a very envious type person, if you are one that's always into division and strife, you know, and you're one that brings these things about, we've already seen it says that an angry man does what? He stirs up strife. So in order for there to be strife, there has to be some anger there. So if we're in these emotional states where we're stirring up strife, we're envying, we're causing divisions. It says, know ye not that, uh, that uh, ye are, know ye not carnal, uh, divisions are ye not carnal and walk as men. We're walking as men in our carnal flesh and we're not walking in the spirit. Jump back to verse 1, can I get on 3 and 1 and read forward. And I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto karma, even as unto babes and Messiah. So, and this is something we have to understand. Paul knew his audience. Shaul knew his audience. He says, and I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto karma. I can't speak to you about spiritual matters. Because right now you're carnal. So we have to understand that also that sometimes we're so spiritually minded as Elder Willie used to say, some people so so heavenly minded <laughs> that they know earthly good. We shouldn't become so spiritual minded that we're not any earthly good. We have to be able to discern when, yes, we who are spiritual, we are spiritual, but there are going to be some that's so carnal minded that when we're trying to share the word with them, they're not going to understand where we're coming from. So we have to find a certain way to reach them where they are. So Paul is saying, I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Mashiach. So you can't be so overly spiritual minded with a babe because they still gonna have a lot of fleshly ways. They're gonna still have a lot of worldliness in them, and we're gonna have to know how to reach them where they are. So you have to talk to them as babes. Okay? Read verse two, can I? I have fed you with milk and not with meat. I fed you with milk and not with meat. 
So they need to first of all understand some thou should not steal. That's what carnal men is out here doing. One thing that right now I will agree with the church on that a lot of what we need to be teaching is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. People need to know to stop stealing. They need to know to stop committing adultery. They need to know to honor their father and their mother. They need to know not to be jealous of or not to covet. They need to know those basic commandments as babes. They need to learn what the actual day of worship is and how not to take our father's name in vain. But we want to introduce calendar. We want to introduce Nida, not knocking it, but Nida. If you have a person that's just coming out of the world and you want to say you ain't supposed to come to the sanctuary when you're on your knee out and that's the first thing you want to teach your sister, they're going to be like, man, that's a natural. Are they saying I'm wicked because I have a, a period? No, that's not what we're saying. That just should not be one of the first things that you're taught. Because you're a babe right now. You do not even understand the importance of Torah. There is a level of how we teach people things because we're trying to be too spiritually minded when sometimes people are still carnal and they're babes, so we got to give them the milk. And some of that milk is right there rooted in the Ten Commandments. Learn how to love God with all your heart, soul, and might. And I'm going to teach you that later. But right now, let's go to these ten. And love thy neighbor as thyself. These first four commandments is in reference to the Most High. And the rest of it is in how you treat your neighbor and how you conduct yourself with your fellow man. And you start building there. And then as they grow, then you start going to these other commandments. These other commandments. I'm not going to try to tell somebody how to observe the moon and how to tell the time right now. When I know that's confusion in our community. That ain't what they're coming to do. They're coming to try to see how to be saved. How to stop sinning. How to repent. How to return from certain things as abomination. And then as we go, because I'm going to tell y'all just from experience sake, Mr. McCall, from experience sake in, in our Knesset, there's no one present now, but in our Knesset, I'm not saying that we allow people to do stuff that's sin, but it's a way that you say things to people that's not offensive, and it's a time and place for everything. So when you have people that first started coming to our Knesset back in the day, they would come to the assembly, they would have a good time for the praise and worship and the word that come forth all praise to the most high, and then they would really enjoy the fact that y'all do this every week. So the fact that we would eat every week they would enjoy the eating of the food every week, right? So what most people do is, well, if this is the type of symbol that it is, I want to bring something. So then what they would do is they would start bringing something. It is not always the most appropriate time to steal someone's joy when they're a babe and they're just trying to do something. So yes, you let them know the dietary. They know we don't eat pork and things like that. They know these things. So they show up on a Shabbat and say, well, you know what? I got up this morning, I fit some macaroni and cheese so that I can bring something to the service. Well, there's a way of saying it. We can say, man, all praise to the most high that, you know, you wanted to bring something that was on your heart to bring something. Oh, this macaroni and cheese is good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it was it was delightful. But the way it was said to people, oh, you know, you ain't supposed to cook on your back. Oh, you ain't supposed to do that. And you got some people that actually <laughs> would not want to eat the thing which was prepared by a person that didn't know better. That now has a person looking at like, now they're staying away from my dish because I prepared it on Shabbat. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to prepare it on Shabbat. And the way this person said it to me, it hurt my feelings. Where the way to say it was, oh, sister, or uh, 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 brother, man, thank you so much for bringing this dish. It, uh, it was so good. It was delightful. But while you're sitting at the table having a, um, having a conversation, well, hey, my brother, my sister, let me, let me um, just show you the scripture just so in the future, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we're all on the path. We've all made mistakes along the way. But uh, on Sabbath, that's not the day we actually prepare anything. But we thank you so much that you did bring this macaroni and cheese. But the next time, uh, actually it says that what if we cook, we should prepare before Shabbat. So it shouldn't have been prepared on Shabbat. I'm not trying to offend you. I just want to share this with you. Because I myself was making some of the same mistakes when I first came to the wall. I was getting up on Sabbath, cooking my Sabbath dinner. Uh, listen to my gospel music and you know you share those things and you make it still where they're accepted and it's not you didn't kill their joy for being over spiritual but it's you was being informative and you was being enlightening in a way where it does not kill a person's spirit so the point that I'm making is that 
when a person is still a babe, they're going to do things that babies do. They're not going to fully know where you are not where you are, and none of us can be to where our elders were overnight. It just don't happen that way. They have to grow to that point. So Paul said that I spoke to them as babes. I fed you with the milk and not with the meat. For here, here the two, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. Y'all hear what Paul saying? <laughs> y'all were not able to bear. It. I started feeding y'all with milk. I didn't give you all the meat. And guess what? You still ain't ready for the meat. You still ain't ready for the meat. So when are we going to start applying what it says in the word ourselves and understand that sometimes we're giving a person a meat diet when they're still on a colostrum, they're still on milk diet, that we have to give them a chance for their gut or their stomach to be able to take in more. And y'all can give me the correction for those who know, but it's either a tablespoon or a teaspoon or something like that, the size of the stomach of a newborn. And as they grow, their stomach will start to expand. But a newborn is going to be on milk for quite some time. So a new brother or sister in the truth may be on milk for what? Quite some time. So let us not upset their ruach or their spirit by being over spiritual, trying to give them stuff that they're not ready for yet. And we need to be talking to them about these things here. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal, for as there is among you envy and strife. We need to not be talking to them about certain things. We need to be telling them that you love our neighbors thyself. Focus on that right now. Do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Focus on that right now. Focus on honor your father and your mother. You still mad with your mom because she put you on punishment? For you doing something that was wrong anyway, so you walk around with an attitude to your parents because they put you on punishment? Focus on honor your father and mother. What does that commandment mean? You run here causing strife and the sun should go down upon your wrath. And it says transgression, a bond of the one that's always in anger. So you're in sin. Focus on not being so angry. Deal with those anger issues. Let's pray together. Because all that stuff is carnal minded. So really you're still too carnal minded to even hear the heavenly matters or the spiritual matters. But I, I must be patient with you or we must be patient with one another to help each other grow to that point to get you out of your emotional state. The emotions are blocking people from receiving the word of the Most High. Read on, Kanaka, where you at? Um, give me verse 4 also. For one self, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believe, even as the master gave to every man? I have planted Apollos water, but Eileen gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that waters, but Eileen that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay, so stop me for a second. So going into what Amore Dawood said last night about some people are so caught up into themselves about being known that I'm the one that did this, I'm the one that did that, and they're all caught up in that. Whereas we see here, like, look, y'all are kind of minded. Some of y'all right talking about I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos. So now y'all done let y'all emotion have y'all taken sides. I'm a Samak, I'm a Yaquab, I'm a Kanakya. Kanakya don't want to talk me to Look, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. The whole point is that we are trying to plant seeds. So as one planteth, another watereth, but it's God to give the increase. The one that planteth is nothing. The one that watereth is nothing, but it is God or Elohim that gives the increase. And that's what we need to understand, too, that we, we shouldn't be so emotional. Um, it's like even right now to, to, to date, right? And I'm going to share something with, with y'all in, in just a moment. Um, it said, to whom much is given, much is uh, uh, required, right? And it's freely you receive, freely you give, right? There are statements that I hear people say that so-and-so said this, and so-and-so said that, and that so-and-so said, and so-and-so said, you know, and they say it in a way where they believe that the saying originated with so-and-so. But I know the statement originated with me. I don't care that it originated with me. 
I'm just having it. I'm like, wow, that really, what, so-and-so took that to heart. And now it's known as a, a saying of so-and-so because it's the word of God. So it's not about, I, I'm not going to say, oh, well, well, actually, I'm the one who came up with that. That's an emotion of selfishness. That's an emotion of pride. I'm just happy that the, the seed was planted. And someone watered that seed, and that seed grew and brought forth fruit. And now the fruit is being spread and planted by someone else, by a seed that I planted. Because that was seed that was planted into me. Such as this lesson I'm teaching right now today. This lesson was not of origin of myself. This lesson was by one of my brothers who have actually shared this lesson with me. Many, many years ago. And I'm reteaching a lesson that he taught. But I'm pretty sure that if he was on this call right now, he would not say, hey, man, that's my lesson that I taught 10 years ago. Man, I'm glad it inspired you some out that you felt like the season that y'all has you in, that instead of you have to go through a whole lot of preparation this time around, that you were able to pull a lesson that the Most High gave you that was beneficial to you 10 years ago, and you are now reteaching that lesson to others. And I hope that that lesson is still beneficial to them, because more than likely, the brother who put this lesson together got it from someplace else. And the reality of it is, even if you were to put this lesson together, it's all scripture. So at some point, all lessons will end up sounding the same if they are coming from the Most High anyway. So we're going to move on. We should be planting seeds. And we should not allow our emotions to take us off the mark of being service of the Most High and not service of ourselves. Yourself, give me what you got, Jeremiah 17 and 9. And the last person I'm going to pull is going to be in... Romans 8 and 8. Can I, uh, give me Romans 8 and 8. Well, 8 and 6. Romans 8 and 6 through 8. But yourself, give me Yemi Yahoo 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Give me verse 10 also. Uh, I don't. I I don't now search the heart. I try I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we see here that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So it's letting you know the heart is deceitful above all things. And just to let y'all know that coming up, what we're going to be going into uh, 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 next week to tie into this lesson is going to be um, a lesson that I did on um, on the mind and the heart. So I'm going to touch on it here uh, briefly. So you know when it says the heart. So now we know that the physical heart is a muscle or organ that pumps blood throughout the body um, that, that makes your blood and stuff pump, you know. So that's not what it's talking about. It's not literally saying the organ that pumps blood is deceiving the wicked. Um, the seed of your imaginations, the seed of your thoughts is exceedingly wicked, meaning your mind, okay? Your mind. And when we go into the lesson, uh, most I will next week, you see where this ties in. But just understand that the heart of your mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's saying all of us. And you see how I said, I love it when a plan comes together. I'm sorry that Kiara was experiencing what she was experiencing. But that's a very real thing she was experiencing because sometimes, Mr. McCall, there will be thoughts that were in your mind that are not your thoughts. And she did not know where I was going with this today. But that was y'all to let her give that testimony to show us that we're in season. He's trying to let us know how to defeat these thoughts. In his word, there's a way to defeat these thoughts. Kiara had already said how she started defeating the thoughts. She first acknowledged that, hey, hold on. Why am I having these thoughts? These are not my thoughts. I don't even think like this, but I'm starting to do it too often. What is going on? And she sought the creator, and he gave her a way to suppress or to deal with those thoughts that was coming in. 
So it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? None of us can know our mind. That is the reason why, like Maury Dawood and Emma was bringing out, don't always see yourself as King David, the righteous one. See yourself as King Saul. Am I the one that's still thinking I'm with God and God is against me because I've turned against the Most High by not keeping his commandments? Or am I actually in righteousness? But our minds are deceitfully wicked and they're desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you cannot always understand your mind and how your mind operates, but you can control it. You can control it. And I'm not one that goes against doctors and things like that because doctors are very important. Even in the scripture, it talks about physicians and going to physicians. Um, and we got scriptures in regards to physicians and going to physicians. So psychiatrists and things like that, uh, sometimes we need that. Some people need that. They need someone to talk to to help them overcome certain thought processes that they may have. Or even at the Knesset, there's some of us that can help you if you're going through a certain thought process, you know what I'm saying, to be able to help you spiritually um, uh, to get through that. But the reality of it is there are sometimes people that do need someone to talk to because of where their mind may race to. It's a very natural thing. But it's my belief that there's something in the word for that. So there was a sister many years ago now that expressed to me something that they've been diagnosed with and while certain behaviors were a certain way. But I said, don't let that be a crutch and don't use it as an excuse. Because I myself am certified crazy. A doctor just ain't never tell me that. My parents never took me to the doctor for it. <laughs> My dad told me about that temper that I had. If you don't get control, he said, I hope that you can talk to me about what you're going through while you got this temper. But if not, I hope you find somebody you can talk to. And he also told me, but if you keep right on with that temper, going like you're going, somebody either going to shoot you or you're going to jail. So now you can let the craziness of that temper and how you go off when you get angry and you think that people are scared of you because you know karate. <laughs> and they probably are scared of you because you know karate. So if they know they can't beat you, what's the next thing they're going to do? And you coming around using karate, which is supposed to be for self-defense, and you going around and you let your anger let you strike someone that's not even in your three feet radius. So it's going to either get you killed or you're going to hurt somebody too bad. It's going to land you in jail. So now you meditate on that, but I hope you can talk to me about it or you can talk to somebody about it, but you got to get over that. And that's the reason why he did not promote me to a black belt. Because I did not have the mindset, the self-control to be promoted to a rank of my skill set. Because the skill set is more than a skill set. The skill set is a mindset. It's a responsibility that comes along with it. So, praise be to Yah, he soon calmed me down. And I did almost <laughs> get landed in jail um, behind it. Praise Yah that he let the boy start breathing again. But I almost took a life by choking by anger over some hot sauce and potato chips. Something that petty. And my email life. Laughing at me. It was really that petty. The guy you came over my house every day using my big giant bottle of hot sauce that you can't use one of them big giant bottles of hot sauce in a year, two years time. You can't even use it. That you can't use that whole thing. But he would come dumping it in a big bag of legs, potato chips. So we had some fried chicken, and I needed my hot sauce for my fried chicken, and all my hot sauce was gone. So you know he had the nerve to show up to my house with a personalized size bottle of hot sauce. The little small bottle. And I said, man, let me get that. You know, use all my hot sauce. And he didn't want to share his hot sauce. <laughs> I'm like, he done used my whole hot sauce. And now he won't even give me his hot sauce. And it turned into something different. And he says a few smart words. And next thing I know, I'm choking him. My anger had me around his neck. He started convulsing. The white stuff was coming out of his mouth. His eyes were rolling back. And he fell to the floor. And he's sitting there twitching and shaking. And my best friend came back to, the, came to me. And they were beating on my arms like, let him go, let him go, let him go. And I was just in such a rage, I didn't let him go. And when I let him go, like I say, he fell to the floor. And praise the Most High, the Most High brought him back. But the point is, while, while it was going on, my friend said, you going to jail, you done killed that boy. And it was over some petty, over some hot sauce. And I'm sharing this with you, Mr. McCall, because I dealt with rage and wrath and anger. I dealt with that. 
And it could end up leading you like what my dad said. It could have ended up getting me killed or could have ended up getting me landed in jail if I didn't get control over that anger. So Yah spared his life, which spares me from having a, a, a case, a petty, foolish, dumb case that sin would have caused me to have because I was in anger. But it's very real. Some of them need somebody to talk to, but the word of Yah, I believe, and as I was sharing with that sister, I'm certified crazy myself. But I've never been diagnosed by a doctor. But I choose to control it by the word of Yah. The word of Yah tells me to be angry and sin not. So when some of that anger pops in my head, I know I can be angry, but I cannot sin. So the word of the most high, because I fear him more than anything, that's the reason why I control my crazy side that still somewhat exists. The word of Yah should trump everything. So even if a doctor diagnoses you with this mental condition, if you have the love of Yah, the love of Yah should be able to allow you to come up with certain things because you are very aware of what you're doing. So now it's a choice. Do you choose to let your behavior be as it is? Or do you say, well, my behavior has me conducting outside of the word of the Most High, and which am I going to choose? My behavior or the word of the Most High? And that's how I started governing myself with a lot of prayer. With a lot of prayer. So, Mr. Bacall, you can change these things. Do not let your emotions control you, but you take control of your emotions. So it says, the heart is deceitful above all, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It says, I, y'all, I, God, search the heart. I try to reigns even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. What this is basically saying is, the most high knows your heart when you was angry. The most high also knows when you have fought on the scripture that says be angry and sin not. And the most high know you still meditated and you lied in wait to take innocent blood. So when the day of judgment comes and the Most High say, I try the hearts of men, the Most High will call back before you. But I do know that the Ruach of the Holy Spirit brought back to your remembrance, be angry and sin not. I do know that the Holy Spirit brought back to your remembrance, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. So I do know that you refused and you rejected the Holy Spirit that brought those scriptures back to your remembrance. And you let the anger go down upon your wrath. And you went and you sat outside that person's house. And you committed that sin that you knew you was not supposed to commit. Therefore, you're going to be judged according to your works. Do not allow your emotions to cause you to not be swift to hear the word of God. And again, for those who, who say they've never heard the audible voice, sometimes the voice is not going to be audible. Everybody's not going to hear an audible voice. But when it said the Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance, when anger is overtaking you, and when scriptures jump to your heart, you better be quick to hear that. Because that is the most high place of a scripture in your mind that's telling you to change the behavior, to control the emotion before you make a mistake. And that's why I say be swift to hear and slow to speak. But if you got to be like, I ain't going to no, shut up. I'm going to keep right on going and I'm going to let them know who I am. You're going to let your anger continue to get more and more hot. It's going to cause you to do something or it's going to cause you to cast or uh, sign a check that your butt can't cash. And the most high, I will judge you accordingly. So just understand that our mind is going to be wicked. And we have to let the most high's word take control of our emotions. And as it said last week, he that control his, that can't control his spirit, you know, is like a city with no walls. Last, last uh, chapter, um, uh, Romans chapter 8, start at verse 6. Come on, guys. Romans chapter 8, start with verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, so even though Paul said that right now I can't talk to you about spiritual matters because of the kind of way you are, you're still carnal minded. And if you're in strife, if you're in envy, if you're in all these things, that's carnal minded. So you can't be spiritually minded as long as you're still consumed with carnality. But it says, but I want you to know this. So here's the thing that should help any of us that's still walking in a carnal mind if we feel the most high. For to be carnally minded is death. So we want to remain in strife, anger, envy. If we want to remain in that place, just understand, for to be carnally minded is death. Read on, come on. Because the carnal mind is in its own. Give me the end of that. Give me the end of that. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if we want that eternal life, 
We have to deny our flesh. We've already covered that the flesh lusts against the spirit. So your flesh and your emotions uh, 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 and your flesh will always try to get you to break the commands of the Most High. But it says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Read on. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. So for the enmity. It said, for the carnal mind is enmity to Elohim. As Elder Herman would always tell us, is to look up words that we think that we know that we know. So look up the words. What is enmity? One definition is the state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Friction. So to oppose, <laughs> to be an enemy to the Most High. So if the if God's words is don't do something, and you oppose to not, and you want to do what He tells you don't do, what are you? You oppose to God's word, right? So you're an enemy to God. And as Elder says, so if that's the case, it becomes a mutual hatred because God says He loves those that keep His commandments, but those who don't keep His commandments, He does what? He hates them. So if you hate his laws, then what does that say that he does to you? <laughs> he hates you back. So it says, but the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, or against God. For it is not subject or submissive to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So if a person is carnally minded and they're always fleshly minded, they cannot and will not submit to the words of Elohim. Until they get control of their flesh, and have a willingness to be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to the action of wrath and anger. It says in verse 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God or Elohim. I just seen somebody put rebellion up. I didn't catch the name. Uh, it, it came up on screen shortly. Uh, rebellion came up. Who said that? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Uh, uh, Sister Nativa said that's rebellion. Yep, so whenever we're going against the Most High's word, that's a form of rebellion. You're against God. So it says here that, um, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we are carnally minded and we're in our flesh, we can't please God. So now if we look at the, the scriptures, what was Paul? Not Paul, speak out. They, they share the same name, but what was Shaul? King Shaul. He was all in his flesh. He was all kind of minded. The only thing he was doing, instead of being a king and protecting Israel and teaching laws and commandments in Israel and how to walk in obedience to the Most High God, whose name is Yah, what was he doing? He was hunting an innocent man, trying to kill him continually because of pride, because of anger, and because of selfishness, right? So he was calling him out. He could no longer please God. So we have to now understand that the same way God turned away from Saul, that if we are commonly minded, God will turn away from us. And if we want him to return to us or for him to come in, we have to let him in by what? Being humble, being of a broken and contrite heart. Read on to verse 9, come on. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, if so be that the spirit of Elohim dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Messiah, he is none of his. Okay, so it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. Brothers and sisters, y'all not in the flesh. We ain't in the flesh, we in the Ruach. We pray so. If so that, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells within you or within us, now if any man have not the Spirit of the Messiah, have not the Spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. So if we don't have the Spirit of Messiah, we're none of his. So how many people are saying they're followers of commonly called Christ that don't look like Christ. I ain't talking about skin tone and skin color. I'm talking about behavior. Where's the love? Where's the compassion? Where's the long suffering? Where's the forgiveness? If we're in unforgiveness, we're carnally minded. If we're stirring up strife, we're carnally minded. If we're envious or jealous, we're carnally minded. If we're in constant worration and not trusting in the Most High, we're carnally minded. And it said, those that are in the flesh cannot please Elohim. So, Mishpachah, I'm going to leave you with a warning that Jacob lovely does. 
pray that the Most High takes the reins of your mind because the mind of the heart is wicked above much. Who can know the mind? We can't know it. Pray that he keeps you from being calmly minded. Pray he keeps you from anger. Pray he keeps you from depression. Pray he keeps you from worration. Do know that those things are going to continually knock at our door. But if we're continually asking, seeking, and praying that God delivers us from it, pray that God does not let our emotions consume us and that he has us more so mission-minded and focused on him than allowing our emotions to get the best of us and overtake us. And if your emotions do start to overtake you, please reach out. Please reach out to a brother or sister that you trust. Don't reach out. Do not reach out to an angry person in matters of anger. Reach out to someone who's overcame anger if you are an angry person. Please do not call a person you know like to start drama. <laughs> Why are you angry? Because the only thing they're going to do is going to add to that fire. They're going to they're put that battery in your pack and going to have you activated. Please do not call a person that lacks faith that worries all the time, and you worry about something, what encouraging words are they going to give you other than you work? Well, well, maybe you need to, uh, <laughs> maybe you need to uh, go ahead and take that overtime they offer you on your box. You know, uh, that, that God probably gave you that overtime. So that's what a, a, a person that uh, worries will do. They will have you worry. Maybe you should steal that. You know, because the only reason why you stealing because you really needed that. Well, uh, no, we just heard a lesson that there's always going to be something that's going to be poor amongst us, and he promised a school shut in Raymond. I'm pretty sure I got a brother, a sister, many brothers and sisters I can reach out to and make sure we get some groceries in this house. I ain't got to steal nothing. I got a Mishmachai that follows Torah, that walks in the spirit, that walks in the Ruach. So I can call and let them know what I'm going through, and I'm pretty sure that one of my brothers and sisters is going to walk in the spirit of the Most High and they're going to provide for me that which I have need of, and they're going to give me the encouraging words. I'm going to share the words uh, from many, many years ago now, uh, probably about uh, 15 years ago maybe. Um, uh, I reached out to Amore, and at this time me and Amore didn't know each other. We didn't know each other personally, uh, but I reached out to him because I just was going through something, and I wanted to throw my thoughts off of Amore to see what, what he thought, and I'm like, this is a person that should be neutral, because he don't know me, he doesn't know, doesn't know anything about me or the situation. So I want to throw some things off him just to see, and I want to examine myself based upon me seeing their teachings, and I feel like they're a man of Elohim as well. So I want to see the response that he would show me. And when I shared the things that I was going through and what was going on in my life at the time, and I was asking him his thoughts, do you know the first thing he asked me before he uh, pulled scripture? Brother, are you all right? Do you need anything? You need money? Is your family good? Was the first thing he asked. He didn't go into, well, let me tell you about yourself. Well, yeah, I think you made this mistake. Or, yeah, I think you did that. First of all, I'm hearing you ask me, what do I think is going on? Before we get to that, are you good? Because based upon what you're saying, and you asking if it's something you did wrong or not, or are you lying up with the scriptures, or what do I think is going on in your life? I first want to make sure you got provisions and that you are told me you're good. And I was like, Brother, I ain't calling you for no handout. I, ain't, I don't want nothing. You like, oh, I, I'm not saying you did, but just in case you did need something, you know, I want to know, did you need anything? I'm like, no, I just want to uh, share with you the scenario and this negative that happened just to throw this thing off of you. And that set with me for a long time so that I'm sharing it to you now. Just understand that every time someone comes to you, that even if they may be the one that's in error, there's not always the time to go on an outright rebuke. Help them get on their feet and say, look, I'm going to help you get on your feet, but now I do need to talk to you about why you're in this condition. So that going forward, you do not land yourself back in the same position. Or there was nothing you can do to avoid that because that's just a test that the Most High had you going through, and you'll pass the test. The fact that you've reached out to me and the Most High placed it on my heart to try to give you the very thing that's going to reset you and put you back on your feet so that you don't even have to walk in the spirit of worry. So worry no more. Just let that thing be gone and go on and keep praising the Most High. And y'all know what I've been saying lately, trust the process. Mr. I'm going to end with this. Let us trust the process of the Most High. Let us put our trust in him. And he will provide all that we have need of 
So seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim. Do not let your anger or your worry consume you. Do not let your emotions take the best of you. And pray to Yah that he take control of your mind. And with that, I give all praise. Someone that you know are battling with their thoughts. Pray for them as well. Because the season that we're in, the enemy is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Do not let the adversary destroy you with your emotions or with the emotions of anyone else. Let's pray for ourselves and pray one for another. With that, I yield, and I now open the floor to the imams first, and then I open it to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, Adon Yaipov after, and then anyone else after that. Shalom. Shalom, Ima. As always, it was an excellent study, and so was the um, two-minute warning. And I just want to say that emotions are real, and we deal with them daily, whether we realize it or not. But we must learn to practice self-control and not give in to what we're feeling, what have you. Um, I used to suffer from road rage really badly. I mean, to the point that I would follow people. I mean, if, if they cut me off, whatever, I would follow them home to get them back if I had to. And the, the last time I did this, I developed a headache that was so severe. And I, I was standing outside of my car talking to the individual who had cut me off. And I realized at that moment that I had to change or I would not survive. And this was years ago, not your current road rage. Things were different then. I probably couldn't get by with it right now. But I prayed. I sincerely prayed. And I tried to make an effort to change. And immediately, I was... I begin to be tested. So once we stop praying for temperance and self-control, you can be tested on a regular basis. And I, I, I'm not bragging and saying that I'm there yet, but it took me a while. It was a process. But uh, I just appreciate you doing this better today. And um, you got me beat with, <laughs> with potato chips and the hot sauce. <laughs> Praise y'all that we both changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was, it was a matter of disrespect. I'll go with him. Uh, hot sauce attention to it. You know, I, he said some words and he was bigger and he just thought it was different. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was it was more than just the, <laughs> But I, I, I understand. You know. <laughs> hey, you, you see Zai face uh, when you started talking about and we thank you for sharing that because that's the thing that people are were not used to in the churches of us sharing past things and how God has delivered us. They see who we are today. And some people think, I can't be like that. Like, these people are set apart. They're holy. You know what I'm saying? So they, they don't come because they feel like I can't get there. But when you share what y'all delivered you from, that's a big thing. Because right now, we, we're sitting, for those that sit looking at the screen, and I just imagine Sierra's face when you started talking, too. Because I know how she is. She probably got that big smile like, not how beautiful songs spoken. Eva sitting there looking like a queen on camera every Shabbat. You know, singing them beautiful songs. <laughs> Chasing people down. Like, like we, we just couldn't imagine it. You don't see that in you, you know. But thank you for sharing because we all have something to overcome. And you, you, you're you bearing witness that it can be overcome. So praise be to the most high. Thank you for sharing that, Iman, your words of wisdom. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Iman. No, the lantern. I just uh, praise y'all for um, that two-minute warning. Uh, that two-minute warning, y'all lesson uh the monk took my word that two minute warning really is a warning and i take it seriously because it's really warning us on how we should get our life together and as y'all was talking i was thinking about i have uh, i have changed too and i was i was i was sitting there thinking i said they don't want to see judy they want to see lady new kirk like you are new kirk and so uh, all my I have this that well I do a foster care. And when you talk about playing songs, I had to play a lot of songs from people from uh, losing my license, I say it like that. <laughs> losing my license. And 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 with the spirit the spirit would talk to you and tell you, you don't need to do this. Calm down. Uh go pray, sing your songs and stuff. But I, I thank I thank I thank y'all for uh, sharing because 
a lot of people say, just look at us today and think we um, um, never really did anything. But we, I never had road rage, but I'm, uh, I'm jacking these people up. But you know, um, you know, by messing with my family and I, and I, but that part is not, that has left me, I hope. I haven't been tested since I've been on this side. And I, so I, um, all I always want to tell folks, especially when I was in the Christian church and they doing my husband, sometimes they can do the pastor's kind of crazy. And I would tell them, I said, y'all do not want to see Judy. And they would tell them, tell them y'all do not want to see Judy. And that's why I, I took this him to retire for his last um, uh, being pastor because I had to walk out on my feet. Because I told my husband, I said, if you stay at this church, they're not going to see Lady Newkirk. They're going to see Judy because I, I, I said, I don't want to say, I can't get over how they're treating you. I can't get over how they're talking to you and all that. And I said, I'm not used to that. So you, you're going to have to retire or your wife might wind up in jail. So this is from the warning and up to now. It, it helps killing Judy out. And y'all will see Lady Newkirk or Elon Newkirk. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and thank you for your words of wisdom and uh, always openly sharing as well, Iman. Uh, all praise be to the Most High. But even with that, like I said, um, that's why I'm, I'm happy, so happy how y'all had uh, Adon Yaipa, uh share about the mission, some kind of emotion is the mission, because uh, sometimes emotion actually saves us too. Like he said, fear, the fear of Yah, that emotion saves us, you know what I'm saying? It delivers us. And the fear of y'all, like I said, look, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to do nothing wrong. That we need to remove ourselves in this situation. That is now being uh, using discretion and being circumspect, saying because I feel this thing, and now it's going beyond my control. And I believe y'all tell us it's time for us to move on to keep from allowing another side to come out. And these are things we need to be aware of. Also, don't try because the scriptures tell you the Most High will not put more on you than you can bear. And it, the scripture also tells you He leaves you an escape. But then sometimes we put ourselves in a situation to take more than we can bear. And that's not on, it's not on God, that's on us. So when he's giving you, like you said, when the Holy Spirit is telling you certain things, take heed to the Spirit because he's trying to deliver you from a situation to cause you to come out of character. So we have to be mindful of these things. That's why we got to be swift to hear and slow to speak and make sure we're meditating on all that's being said. So thank you, thank you, Iman, uh, for your words of wisdom and for you openly sharing. All right, Adon, Yaiqua, the floor is yours, sir. But um, I'm going to echo the email. Um, so blessing, so blessing. Um, and told out for your words, Iman uh, Nuker. Um, I, I just want to say um, these emotions. You know, I, I, I had a, a recent experience with the emotions, and I'm not going to get into detail. But I, I was I was wondering why am I having these feelings, these particular feelings, and I, and you know I, I, and I'm praying to the Most High, but I'm saying I'm scared. I'm I'm, I'm like, did the Most High take his rule up from me? I know I shouldn't be, and why am I feeling this way? Please, you know I want to know what I what did I do? Why you know why can't I shake this feeling? Is it, did the Most High cut me off? Did I do something so bad? You know, but you know you pray and 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 and. Um, the, the feeling really the next was the confirmation that no I, I ain't cut you off yet, Club. <laughs> you know I didn't cut you off you, 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 you keep doing what you're doing and, and those feelings did go away I, you know I, it's not even really a thought anymore but I just want to say that you know that these emotions are real these emotions are essential and I think throughout all these lessons that we're having that, that we're starting to see the these emotions Emotions are essential. We are supposed to have these emotions, but what will happen if we allow these emotions to dictate how we live our life instead of Torah to dictate how we live our life? So, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, for your words of wisdom, always a dawn, and for you, Sharon, and also, again, for a uh, dawn told, but very good. Uh, two minute warning. So, uh, total revive for you allowing y'all to use you and you humbling yourself to his ruach. So, praise be to y'all. All right, my dear sister Nativa, the floor is yours. 
And anyone else, uh, y'all can start raising your hands now, and I'll give it in the order the best I can as they come in for anyone else that would like to share. So we're going to start with uh, Akoti Natifa first. The floor is yours, Akoti. Um, yes. Um, so this morning when um, Kiara gave that testimony, that was going to be my testimony, but I didn't say anything about the mind, about the mind and what I was going through because that's the fight. And especially the emotion, because I always, like, get up the first thing in the morning, I always praise him and worship him. But this mind, that stuff that coming in my mind, thoughts that's not mine, that never taught those things before, start coming up. And then I start getting scared. And I, just like what Yaakov said, that, you know, I was thinking that Yah is not there for me no more. And I was like, where are you? What I've done, I'm trying to walk right. I'm doing the right thing. Why I'm not airing you no more. And he was bad. He get me sad, emotion. And sometimes I always sing in prison, but I blocked from that. I was lacked from it. I would stop doing it because the sadness had come over me, like it suppressed me. And I was driving and my mind keep going, going to work. My mind keep going all over, thinking a lot. And I also brought this up in the, um, the lady's study. I think her name is Shalia, Shalia um, Maria Dau's wife. And I asked her, like, why do these things come? What, what can I do to control these things? And she prayed that night, and she prayed for me. And I, and I said, told her to her, and I went to thank the Most High to answer the prayer because I agreed to her prayer. And she's, um, I always sing anyway, but this was a song that came in my art. And every morning I get up, I, I get up with that song song in my in my spirit it was saying said his word is healing there's healing in his words and there's power in his words and this is a song that played and these thoughts gone away it's gone you know when i go to work i put that song on and it's gone and i feel more alive now i'm really alive and i want to say toda to my mishpika who prayed for me and i want to thank the most High for everything to help me with this mind control i'm telling you it was so horrible it keep me suppressed and i'm going to praise y'all hallelujah hallelujah uh praise y'all for sisters that pray for you and that you like i say you have an outlet and again that's why I, like i say these gathering together like we all battle with things and sometimes we feel like why am i going through this and you feel like it's you directly and something wrong with you sometimes but when we share in this you see that we all battle with these same type of things and it's natural. And I want to read something so that anyone else, because I'm pretty sure others on here is now probably saying, yep, the same thing has been happening to me. And if it wasn't this week or last week, it's happened to me before. Um, so what I want to um, uh, share with you, especially for a lot of you who are now just really, really coming to the knowledge of the truth as it's written according to the Torah and the true Ruach of the Most High. And, uh, uh, this is Siraka Ecclesiasticus, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, uh, my son, so I'm going to say my son or my daughter, if you come to serve Yah, prepare your soul for temptation. I'm going to read it again. My son or daughter, if you come to serve Yah, prepare your soul for temptation. Set your heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that you may be increased at your last end. Whatsoever is brought upon you, take cheerfully and be patient when you are changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help you. Order your way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear Yah, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Ye that fear Yah, believe in him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear Yah, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generation of old and see, did ever any trust in Yah and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For Yah is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgives sins and saves in time of affliction. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands. I'm going to read it again. Woe be unto the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, but he believes not. 
Therefore shall he not be defended. So I'm going to stop it for a moment. So he's basically saying we can't be faint-hearted when we, we can't be. We can't waver back and forth in our faith. That's why in the book of James it tells you, uh, for without faith it is impossible to please him. The most high wants us to put our total trust in him. And sometimes the things we're going through, like what I asked the Moray years ago, and like what Yaqua was sharing when he was talking with Iman just now about him thinking about some emotion that came up, and then like, what am I doing and things like that? Sometimes there's nothing you're even doing wrong. It can just be a test of faith that we're going through, and the most high don't want us to be faint-hearted. He said, and whatever we're going through, be joyous, you know, but just know that your reward will not fail. Has there ever been any, as he's asked, has there ever been any that believed and trusted in him that walked upright, that he despised, that he confounded, that he did not deliver, that he did not give what they had need of? He's letting us know we're going to be tried in the fire and an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So sometimes you being through the fire, you feeling a certain way, that's you being tried in the fire. That's saying you're acceptable. And while you in the fire, guess who comes? The adversary. The adversary tries to come while you're in the fire to make you doubt, to doubt yourself, to doubt, to, to, to doubt yourself. Not so much as doubting y'all. You think that y'all forsake me. Am I not worthy of Yah? Y'all don't just think like that. You are worthy. He's just trying you. And he's going to deliver you if you're walking upright. So if you now start going through these things, you go through your thoughts, have Yah forsaken me? Go through the world and see how am I living my life? Okay, well, why did this thing happen to me? You may not fully understand why it happened, but you can say, but I don't feel I did anything to deserve it. Which means if you're looking and you're going through the Torah and you're looking at your behavior and mannerism, it could just be it's a wicked individual. That Yah's going to judge. And you were tried in the fire. And I'm sorry for some of the things that we do have to go through. You know, because some things are bad. But Yah tries us in the fire of adversity. And he will bring us through the fire. And our reward, it says, endure to the end. But he tells us to prepare. If we come to him, once you said I want to be his, the Satan is going to come at you. And Satan has people that can touch your body. Satan has people that can do those things because when it says about Job, Satan said, well, look, as long as you got your guard, your protection around him, well, I can't try him. I can't do nothing to him. You won't let me touch him. And then y'all said what? Well, go ahead and touch him. Go ahead and touch him. But you can't kill him. You can do anything but kill him. Go ahead and touch him. You can make him sick. You can take everything from him. And I want y'all to be able to also see yourself in that scripture. Sometimes the things that's being taken from you and sometimes the negative that's happening to you, start reading these scriptures and see yourself in it. The most high is taking me through it because I'm his. Satan is sitting there saying there's nobody in the earth that still truly serves you. And the most high said, that is a lie. Have you considered E my new Kirk? Have you considered E my Audrey? Have you considered Davion and the King family? Have you considered Sha'an Yah? Have you you consider the Francis family? Have you considered Atifa and Shakira? Have you considered them? Oh, well, no, I didn't, because I know you protecting them, but they call upon your name. Well, I'm going to let you go mess with them, but I want to prove to you that I have children on this earth, that no matter what's done to them, they're going to believe that I'm going to bring them through. So go ahead, I'm going to let you mess with them for a season. And even when they doubt slip in, I know they got brothers and sisters that's going to pray for them. They know who they can reach out to that's going to give them an encouraging word. And be like, oh, I get why I'm going through this now. Or even if I don't get it, I'm going to stand firm anyway because y'all will deliver me. Start understanding that there's certain things that made it in the scriptures for us to use. Do you think Job was the only person that happened to? Job was not even the first person that happened to. It happened to Abraham first. The most I asked for time, have you considered Abraham? Have you considered Abraham? And when Shatan actually considered Abraham and went to Abraham, Abraham passed the test. Job passed the test. So guess what? They've already shown us that when you lose something, when your child has been threatened to be taken from you, when you lose your wealth and your estate, the most I can always give you more than what you've ever had. And he also always either save your child or give you another child, whichever way he sees fit. So don't let doubt and worration slip in on us. And when it do, call each other and strengthen one another in y'all. As Latifah got strengthened uh, via uh, the sister study, you know what I'm saying, and via the prayer. But just also understand that, again, as, as I was covering, 
uh, uh, last week that it says those that are by the wayside were those that did not have understanding. There is so much word that we have not covered that as you start to cover it, it will strengthen you more and more. And that's the reason why sometimes, like Aisha would say, sometimes the way that I do things, I have this nonchalant looking mannerism, or I even may have a procrastinative looking mannerism about things. It's not that I'm procrastinating or nonchalant sometimes. I'm just not worried. <laughs> I'm just not stressing it. I just already thought about it. I already thought what I'm going to do about it, when I'm going to do it, and it's just not urgent to me at this moment. Preparing this lesson is, you know what I'm saying? Making a prayer call is, you know, being there for a brother or sister that needs me is. And I get to this bill or whatever this is later, and as y'all has always provided, he will provide, but you still got to do all things different, decent and in order. You got to take care of things uh, in a certain way, but you just cannot let worry consume you. So, and there's so much word, and these are the words where I draw my strength from, knowing that the Most High has told us to prepare ourselves for temptation. When you come to be his, you are now a target. There's a target on your back. I'm not trying to say that to make you scared. I'm trying to let you know that to make you strong. So when you're going through these things, don't let the stress take you down. Stay encouraged in the Most High. Hallelujah. Oh, praise all, praise all, praise him. Thank you, Natifa, for sharing, my dear sister, what you were going through. We will keep you lifted up in prayers as well as all others. All right, Francis family, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, first, I just want to give all praises, honor, and esteem to Yah in um, the way that he speaks to all of us and how differently he speaks to all of us. I also want to say, before I say what I need to say, I love seeing my imams and my sisters, so... Y'all keep coming. Put your cameras on so I can see y'all and smile. Um, okay, now with all that being said, um, today, like, okay, so I was, sometimes I get these good thoughts, not the bad thoughts. Sometimes I get these good, and they're images, right? So today I had an image of a beehive, and I couldn't understand it, but I, I uh, drew the beehive out, and I um, wrote down everything I knew about bees. And so I'm going I'm to read what I wrote, and then I'm going to tell you how amazing y'all is um, afterwards. But I think y'all will figure it out beforehand. So um, it says, a beehive protects the hive. A beehive protects the hive and the queen. A queen stays inside the hive and moves about the hive as needed. The bees protect the queen, and without the queen, the hive no longer protects the hive. And then when the queen is not aligned with the system, the bees protecting the hive becomes aggressive and deadly. And so I had like three questions because I couldn't understand, like, again, I couldn't understand it. So I'm just writing things out. And I was like, well, who is the queen? Who is the hive? And who are the bees? And so then, you know, my Ava and then Maury Samak, it starts talking about emotions and mission. It starts talking about uh, a, a not letting your emotions uh, dictate your actions. And then pop, 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 hallelujah. I'm so happy now because, like, I get it. The queen is our, is the ruach, you know, and the ruach moves within us. The hive is us, like our our body. And the, and the queen is moving within us, right? And then the bees are our actions. So like um, when the when the queen is not aligned with the system, then those beehives starts getting aggressive and starts getting deadly. And instead of going out and 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 uh, doing what their purpose is, which is to pollinate and to create honey, that that beehive or those bees are going out attacking everything, you know, and 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 attacking animals, attacking people, attacking all of that. And so here we are talking about making sure that our our ruach is aligned with us and how when that happens, everything is just symbolic, symbolic, uh, you know, symbiotic. Did I say that right? Symbiotic. <laughs> Sorry. And, and, and it's just, uh, it's just so amazing when, because it was just a random thought today for no reason. And I was like, something told me to write it and, and, and color it. I have it different colors and all that stuff. And then after this message, I'm just like, Yah is amazing. And, 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 I can, and, and he speaks to us. 
And so I just want to give, I, I, I'm just amazed. And I don't know why I'm amazed because he does this all the time. But it's just when it happens, you're just like, ah, thank you, y'all, for choosing me. Thank you, y'all, for speaking to me. Thank you, y'all, for, you know, just just being there and showing, like, just showing out, you know? <laughs> so um, I want to give praise and honor to, to the Most High. I also want to uh, thank this whole Mishpacha um, and and. Um, and, and, and I could ramble on forever, but hallelujah, all praises. Again, I love uh, seeing, seeing my, um, my family here and also having my family here. So um, that's it. Did you? No. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 And uh, praise be to you. I just, I'm just, uh, that just you talking was a delight to me on the Shabbat, just hearing your, your joy and your expression. So praise y'all. And actually what you said, you know, when you was talking about the bees, you know, you was talking about the hive, you, you know, they basically became King Saul. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of doing what he was supposed to do and be protecting and pollinating and all those things, like you said, like you tied it in very well. So uh, praise y'all for the spirit that he has on your home. Because like I was sharing with, uh, with your each uh, the other night on study, the way he puts words together after he hears a lesson and he gives such a visual, uh, 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 a visual uh, picture uh, by using sports or whatever it is that comes to his mind, it actually helps the lesson even more. So basically, like you said, uh, they become like King Saul. They, 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 get out of, they get out of order. They become violent and aggressive. So praise y'all for giving you that revelation and for you sharing it with us and for us being a one body so that this could be brought forth before all. So Baruch HaBah Hashem Yahuwah HaGadah Aleim. Bless me his Kodash name. All right, uh, Davion, uh, or King family, House of King, I should say, because I don't know who's about to speak. So, House of King, the floor is yours. If y'all are speaking, your mic is okay. Okay, Shalom, it's me again. <laughs> I'm just long winded today, folks. But it was a good, yeah, it was a good lesson. What I learned today was. Um, my, I'm always giving my grandchildren hugs individually, but this one particular morning, um, my, uh, Mikey decided to, oh, 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 that's what, we, that's what I need in my house. Instead of giving them individually, give everybody a group hug, a group hug so they know that we're a family and we're all together, just like the mission comes. So I'm, I'm glad for that lesson. And we won't be slow that. We won't be, we'll be more slow to anger. Why? Because we're giving each other, not individual hug, but as a group hug. So I, I thank you. I, I thank you for, I thank you all for the day for putting that together. And putting that in my head and my heart to tell y'all that. Hallelujah. 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 And, and thank you for sharing that. Uh, I just turned and looked at Zah. I said, that's something we need to implement at home. I like the group hug. The group hug. All, all the card. I, I like that, sister. I like that. I'll pray to the most high. All right. Does anyone else have any words before we get ready to close out? Give all praise, honor, and esteem uh, to the Most High Yah. Uh, and I'm going to get ready to close out with Teflon. And we always esteem and honor Yah. And told our Yah for sending Yahusha Mashiach, our Master and Savior, who came in the flesh to show us that we can walk in perfection in the Torah, how to walk in the true spirit, how to control the flesh and our emotions. And so I pray that we become more and more like our big brother on each and every day. So I'm going to close out now with Teflon. <clears throat> Blessed you, Yahuwah, our King, Elohim, King of the universe. Father, we thank you for this Shabbat day. We thank you for your set apart word in which you have left for us to read, study, and to meditate on. And we thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh, or your Holy Spirit, which helps us to understand that which is written which shows us 
the mannerisms that we should have when trying to apply or keep your written word. Father, we thank you for a family that we have that we can gather together with, that we can share joy with, that we can encourage when we're down or when we're sad, that we can draw strength from when we're weak. Because as Mashiach said in the book of Matthew, who is my mother, brother, sister, but those that do the will of my father, which is in heaven, so, Father, we thank you for our spiritual, the Mishmaq, our spiritual family, those who are seeking you together, those who are trying to do your will together, because that is our mother, brother, and sister. So, Father, I thank you for the brothers, the sisters, the imams, the elders that you have gathered together that's calling upon your name together. As we are not perfect and still not doing all things right, we thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit that is leading us in a season together, that we can be a kind. That you have us concerned and considering our emotions, the very thing that can keep us rooted in you or cause us, Abba, to lose our salvation. We ask if you will continue to put a block or a guard over our mind, that when thoughts that are not our natural thoughts are planted, that, Father, you rebuke them and that you give us the control to not to allow them to rule in our body, that we do not become a servant to Shaitan. Mm. Father, I'd like to ask a special Teflon for Latifa and for Kiara, as they've shared on this day, Abba, that there have been thoughts that they've been having as of recent, that they have identified not to be their thoughts. And, Father, I ask if you would continually prepare their hearts for temptation as they serve you, that they're not given subject to the thoughts that are coming in. I rebuke Shaitan and your Kodash name, Yahuwah, that even though, Father, they may be those whom you allow him to use, do not allow him to ever be able to beguile or trick them. Do not ever allow him to be able to pressure them so much or plant thoughts so much that they will give in to emotions or give in to the thoughts but that your Ruach would always take the reins of their hearts and reign supreme in their life, that any time any thought that is negative comes, that is not their thoughts, that your Ruach would always give them the understanding of what to do, that it would bring a scripture to their remembrance that they would sin not. And Father, now I would like to bring a blanket prayer to us all. Every member that's on this call, every member that's scattered throughout the four corners of any Knesset that fellowships with us, and even those who does not fellowship with us, those that are seeking your face. Father, I ask if you will remove from us the carnal-mindedness, remove strife and division, remove hatred, remove the confusion and the division album, which things lead to carnal-mindedness. And Father, your word says that when we are carnal-minded, we cannot please you, O Elohim. So do not let us walk after the flesh. Do not let us remain in a carnal mind. But when the carnal thoughts come, Abba, that we rebuke them, that you give us your ruach to show us the escape and the way out, that we never let the thoughts marinate, that we do not meditate on the negative, that it produces an action that will cause us to regret it. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. <clears throat> we thank you, Abba, Yahuwah, Yara, our provider, who provides for us all that we have need of, Father, I just ask if you would take the reins of all of our hearts and all of our minds. For those of us, Abba, who have the natural test from Shaitan or the, those thoughts that Shaitan is planning, that is considered normal, Abba. When I say normal, we've not been diagnosed with any medical condition of Alzheimer's or dementia, things that we know is hard for people to fight against. We ask that you will not allow Shaitan to have our spirit, that we are able to hear you when you speak to us, Abba, and that we do not give in to him. But Father, to those, Abba, who has a spirit that does not have walls, Abba, who may be suffering from a condition that they've been diagnosed with something that needs a power higher than man to intervene, a power higher than medication, 
nation to intervene. A power such as you owe y'all to intervene. We ask for all those that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia or any condition of the mind, schizophrenia, bipolar. Father, we ask if you will, in the state of confusion, let your Ruach still reign supreme, Abba. I beg of you on this day, for they still may not know how to call out unto you as we do, but we call out on their behalf that you will intercede, Abba, and that your Ruach, when their thoughts are cloudy, when they're fogged up and they have no direction, no self-control, no self-restraint, do not even know how to do that thing, Abba. We ask if you will allow your Ruach, Hakodesh, your Holy Spirit, to give them that serenity, that peace, that calmness that they're seeking. Because, Father, there's a part of the lesson that I did not make it to today. But that everything comes back to Shalom or Shalem, which is that place of peace. And when emotions come in, it disrupts the peace. And when the peace is disrupted, it disrupts the oneness with you. Father, even in your law, it tells us about the law of restoration, the law of forgiveness and repentance. Then when we're restoring to someone a thing that we've broken or damaged, the restoration is referred to as shalom or shalom or peace. So peace is interrupted when sin is present. Peace is interrupted when anger or transgression is present. Peace is interrupted. Serenity is interrupted when confusion or division is present. So, Father, we ask that you will give those who are battling those medical conditions that is trying to seek peace that do not know what they're seeking, but they're trying to find that oneness within their mind that they're entrapped in. I'm going to ask if you will let them find peace. I ask if you will suppress and you will slow the growing of the sickness. Father, I ask if you will heal it in all those that you want to heal and restore. It. And Father, for all families that are caring for someone or have to be with someone and they have to see it on a daily, I ask if you will give them an extra gift of patience, extra understanding, extra strength, extra compassion, so that they can endure, Abba, that very thing, that they will understand the Ruach as it comes in, and all those, Abba, that are not fully involved in it on a daily, that is subject to it sometimes, that they will be understanding to such said conditions, and that we will always lift them before you, Abba. But I ask if you will give them peace at this very time. Father, I ask if you will take control of all hearts and minds. As I'm sending this Teflon up unto you, Abba, we've identified a Ruach that have tried to come in in the midst of this Teflon. I ask if you will give peace in that place, Abba. Give peace that when your word is coming forward, that when the adversary, and I thank you, Father, I thank you for the words of Kiera, who has helped me to even be able to understand better some things that is going on. That when the queen has, Father, lost the, the way, Abba, that the bees become aggressive. And instead of them pollinating and doing the things to protect the, keep, to protect the queen and the hive, Abba, they now just start to attack. And that is what happens with some of these medical conditions, Abba. That when the peace is moved and the self-control is not there naturally, that they're more subject to ruachs that we can suppress. So, Father, I ask if you put a special guard and a hedge of protection around their leg, around their heart, that the adversary does not always intervene on your Shabbat when your word is being read, when counsel is being given from your word, because that is definitely a spirit that's not of you, O Yah. And let us identify, let us pray against that spirit and not judge individuals for they do not have that control but that we pray for them, the prayer that we were saying as our warning, that we pray, Abba, that you take control of our mind, that we pray that you do not allow our emotions to get the best of us, that we pray that you do not allow us to be in anger, 
that we pray that you do not allow us to be in depression, anxiety, or worration, and that we seek ye the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, I ask if you will place all those who cannot ask this on their own and that are in a state of confusion, that, Father, you let them walk in a state of Shemayim in their mind, that Mashiach is making his appearance in their mind, that your Ruach is making an appearance in their mind, that you're taking worration, sadness from them, Abba, and allow them that even in the cloudiness to see the light, and that your name is esteem, and that your way is esteem, and that no matter what is going on, that respect and honor is always in their heart towards you, Abba Yah, and do not let the adversary try to take advantage of those who cannot defend themselves. And let us, as the watchmen and watch women, watch for those who oppose themselves. Father, we praise you, honor, and we esteem your name. Father, I ask for all true light and all remnant and all Israel that are scattered abroad, Hebrew and Gentile alike, that you take the reins of our heart and our mind and that you not give us over to our emotions, that we stay focused on our mission. And the whole mission, the whole duty of man is to fear you and to keep your commandments. Father, let our salvation not be interrupted by our emotions. And we ask if you will wall us in, that we can control our spirit and our ruach. I ask if the spirit of love, compassion, mercy, joy, and happiness will be poured into every heart into every household, into every being in every household, that marriages are strengthened, that brotherhoods and sisterhoods are strengthened, that the love of parents to children and children to parents are strengthened, that we, Father, are truly a true light, the remnant of you, O Yah, the remnant of hope. We praise, honor, and we esteem your name. And Father, I ask for all our medical workers again, Father, all our essential workers, if you will continue to watch over, bless and keep them safe during this time of COVID and keep us all safe. Father, I ask if while different things are going on in the media that is targeting and triggering our emotions, that we do not allow those things to get the best of us, but that we tough law, we pray to you, and we put it in your hands and we trust in you. Father, we thank you for this Shabbat, and we thank you for us gathering together as a Mishpachah for all the words that were shared. Baruch Haba Hashem Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. And blessed be he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Bless you, O Yah. And we say, Torah for this Shabbat. Torah for the outpouring of your Ruach. And Father, we ask that you would provide for us all that we have need of and heal us all from any infirmity, any sickness of the body, any sickness of the mind, any sickness of the Ruach, that we may be spiritual minded and walk in your Ruach, pleasing in your sight. Our Redeemer, our Savior. Torah Rabbi, Torah Rabbi. Halal ya, halal ya, amen, wa amen. Amen, amen. Praise ya, praise ya, praise ya. All right, Mishpachah.